Good afternoon on a beautiful weather day here in Normal, Alabama. Coming from the beautiful campus of Alabama A&M University. We got a swag showdown tonight as the Lady Bulldogs host the Lady Jags of Southern University. I'm Chauncey Sanders being joined alongside by my partners, Jawan and Micaiah. Guys, we got a good one today. A lot of emotions in the air. Also, still a lot on the line here for both teams as the Lady Jaguars lost hard at home against Alabama State University this past week. They're looking to avenge that and try to get back on the board and try to finish out hard here on this race against the Lady Bulldogs, who now sit in second place in the conference. Yeah, with a win today, we can solidify that second spot in the swag. So it's a lot of emotion with this being the last game at Elmore and also with this being senior night. So we need to um, take all that built-up energy and try and get a W as we can get a, a good spot in the tournament today. Definitely. Now, Micaiah, like we said, lots on the line here for the Lady Bulldogs. How high are the stakes here for the Lady Bulldogs, knowing that if they lose this game, they may be able to fall lower into the conference instead of being seated second? Um, it's very high. Um, the last time we played them, they, we did have more turnovers and we also got more high rebounding. So, and their young um, Lewis wasn't actually able to score too many points, but we should be able to get them to just stay calm, just stay consistent, and just keep the pace and just stay cool playing defense. We should be able to get this one. Definitely. Now, guys, we talked about it earlier. Lots on the line, but also very sentimental game here today for the Lady Bulldogs in the entire A&M athletic program as this will be the final game for the regular season in this gymnasium, the Elmore Gymnasium. As we know, both teams are anticipating moving on to the new event center next season as well. Guys, how sentimental will it be for these seniors as well as both teams here? Yeah, it's going to be big, not even for the players, for Coach Richard. She started to solidify her spot as a, a women's coach here in the SWAC and a and history. So I'm pretty sure she'll want to send her seniors off with the W, send Elmore off with the W, and just send the rest of her players out. Like we said, this is going to be the last regular season game in Elmore. So like we've been saying, it's going to be a lot of motion, but we can't let that overtake what's the biggest um, part of this game, and that's getting the W today. Definitely. Now, guys, a lot of seniors here for the Lady Bulldogs sending out Nigeria Jones as well as Dariana Lewis now. How big have those two been for this Lady Bulldog team and the program? Um, they've been very big. They've been two great leaders for this team. And I'm pretty sure that they want to keep the team to be great and just lead the path and just have also have to, they've been some great mentors for the next people that's going to be up in their spots next season. Juwan? Yeah, they're the big leaders for this team. They're, um, like Coach Rich said, they're her babies. They're her first recruiting class. So I know Coach Rich has spoke to them about how much she meant to them, how they're both leaders for this team, and they're a big one-two punch for the team. So i like to see both of them get sent off well. Definitely looking to see a good one here. Elmore Gymnasium as we're starting to get the starting lineups here for both teams as we'll be coming out right after the break with tip-off after the break here at Elmore Gymnasium. Good one on our hands between the Southern University Lady Jags as well as our home team in the gray, the maroon and white themselves, the Lady Bulldogs of Alabama A&M. Don't touch that dial yet. We'll be right back after the break. Let's go, 
Welcome to Elmore Gymnasium. As Clowers gets the ball, she finds her lead guard, Nigeria Jones. Jones met with a screen from Clowers. Over into the hands of Lewis. Nice hairstyle there for Senior Knight. Nice and fresh. Virgin driving, finds Harris. Harris three is up. No good. Into the hands of Clowers. Nice offensive rebound. The putback is up. No good. Ball is tipped around and out of bounds. Yeah, nice to see the hustle um, coming from our Lady Bulldogs. It's a good open shot right there from Jill to start the game off. As those um, threes early in the game on um, Friday were a key part of us getting that big lead in the beginning. Nice ball movement here from the Lady Jags. We took a tough loss. They were right there in the mix as well. Fighting up against the Lady Bulldogs as well as the Lady Hornets of Alabama State University for the second C position going into the tournament as they fell 64 to 46. Tough loss there, nearly a 20 point loss. As and we know, they'll be looking to bounce back from that, led by head coach Carlos Funches. And we've been having a lot of games going our way um, in the end of this season. With a dub right here, we can finish with the second spot, and I know Coach Richards would be happy with that. Virgin met with a screen. Virgin driving, right hand layup is up, bounces around and in, and she gets the Lady Bulldogs on the board. Johnson gets towards the middle of the floor, nice bounce pass. Gets the ball over. Nice defense there by Clowers as Berger will be called for a foul. At the line is Amani McWayne, the senior guard out of Rooston, Louisiana. Rooston High School graduate. Not too far from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Second free throw is up and in. Virgin, nice pass over to Harris as the Lady Bulldogs are faced with the full court trap here from the Lady Jags, trying to get the Lady Bulldogs out of their usual offense and making them trying to move to a faster pace as Harris has the ball on the wing. Pass is broken up and stolen. Nice blow ball movement here as Metcalf has the ball. She swings it back up top to Kinsey. Kinsey met with the screen. Kinsey has the ball up top. Thought about a three. No. Drives instead. Tough shot. No good. Off the bottom of the backboard, rebounded by Clowers. Here comes Harris pushing the ball up the floor. Met with the trap. Harris almost into one of those trap spots. Great defense there by the Lady Jags. They force the steal. Layup is up and in by Johnson. Two to seven. Jones driving towards the right side of the floor. Right hand layup is up and in. Nigeria Jones answering the call as usual. Guys, she has stepped up so huge for this Lady Bulldog team down the stretch when they need a play to happen, when they need to make a play, when they need to get something going. They call on the Jones, and she's answered a dial every time. Yeah, and not just on the offensive side. She's been a good scorer and a good playmaker for her, but on the defensive side as well. She's a good defender for us. She does a great job of forcing those on-ball steals and getting those easy layers. What a pass there, as we mentioned from Jones, as she gets that one to Clowers for the easy right-hand layup. 6-7, the Lady Bulldogs are finding their foot now. And that's another um, senior we have going away today, Miss Clowers. So nice to see that she's getting on the scoreboard earlier. She's a big part of this offense, but she can get going down low as well. What a bounce pass into the hands of McQueen as that one falls. Harris met with the trap. She finds Clowers. Clowers turns around, finds Jones in the forecourt. 6-9 here, the Lady Bulldogs. Got in their last two possessions to fall. Jones takes a mid-range shot. It's up no good. Rebounded by Clowers. No. Clowers not able to come down with it. Goes right into the hands of Johnson as she pushes the ball to the floor. Nice cross-court pass over into the hands of Kinsey. She tries a three. It's in. Timeout, Coach Margaret Richards. As the Lady Bulldogs trail 12-6 with 6.05 remaining here in the opening quarter. 
We'll be right back after the break. It's the Alabama A&M Athletics YouTube live stream. Welcome back to Elmore Gymnasium. The Lady Bulldogs trail by six, 12 to six here in the opening quarter with just now a little over five minutes remaining here as Jones finds Kira Johnson Graham who just subbed in. Right hand layup is short around the rim, no good. Here come the Lady Jags pushing the ball up the floor. Nice bounce pass there into the hands. Whoa, ball nearly went out of bounds, and it did there as Watson wasn't able to come up with the ball. Had a couple substitutions here for the Lady Jags as well as Fleming and Watson have checked in for the backcourt. Also checking in for the Lady Bulldogs is Janiah Alexander. Nice screen there from Johnson Ground. Lewis has the ball. Fine. Alexander driving now. Tough scoop shot. No good. Into the hands of Lewis, however. Lewis has 10 seconds on the shot clock. Takes a step back mid-range. It's good. Yeah, she's really been displaying her versatility as a scorer these last couple games. But not only her touch in the paint, but she can score outside the paint with those little jump shots. Ball out of bounds. A little too high there for White. The Lady Bulldogs coming up with a couple of turnovers here. Jones looking inside finds Lewis. What a pass there inside for Lewis with multiple hands in her face. She's able to get the left hand layup to go. Two point ball game here as the Lady Bulldogs are still fighting back. As Coach Richards dialed up a 2 3 matchup zone here. Nice pass over into the hands of Watson. Mid-range is in. What an answer to the Lady Bulldogs' fury. Yeah, and they're keeping up with us on the offensive side. They're hitting some nice shots. We need to start to slow them down as they're getting real efficient with their scoring. Alexander finds Lewis. Turnaround mid-range, no good. As Fleming pushes the ball up the floor. Somehow that pass got inside there to Moore. Watson has the ball. Great defense here by the Lady Bulldogs. Ten seconds on the shot clock as the Lady Jags are trying to maneuver here. Tough mid-range shot is up. No good. Ball is tipped around into the hands of Moore. Her putback is no good off the front rim. Alexander, however, is not able to come up with the ball. Yeah, good hustle right there. Just going to come up with it. But we need to slow him down with these offensive rebounds. They're starting to get some sick and change points in. That can easily change the lead of this game.
fresh shot clock here. 15 seconds on the shot clock. Fleming gets a screen. Kicks the ball. Excuse me, that was over from Watson as that shot was no good from Fleming. She'll be at the line for two. That foul will go on to Burgeon. That'll be Burgeon's second. Into the ball game. It's going to be number 15, Jill Harris. Harris had a solid outing for this Lady Bulldog team. Last time we saw her, eight quick points. And she was a part of that fury that the Lady Bulldogs had in that first half. Yeah, she was a good spark plug for us in the beginning. We couldn't find our offense for a second. And she hit some two big threes and then um, got a layup off the steel that really ignited our offense to help get us first quarter scoring on. Second free throw there goes flailing out as it's no good. Alexander finds Jones for three. Tees it up, no good. Fleming pushing the ball up the floor. Nice pass inside for Moore. Moore turns around, put the ball on the floor. Great defense there from Johnson Graham. Had the presence of mind not to foul, but to strip Moore as she put the ball on the floor. She could have easily put that one up and in. Yeah, and that's the hustle plays that Kiara can get us. She fights on the board just like Dariana, and that was a good hustle play by her to get the possession for us. Checking in for the Lady Jags is number 21, Tiana Lidge, the freshman big from El Paso, Texas. Lewis has the ball. Lewis driving, tough shot, no good, but she's going to be at the line for two as that foul will quickly go on to Lidge. Tough assignment for her defensively coming in against one of the all swag lady players here as well as one of the most dominant bigs in the conference in Lewis. Yeah, she's going to be a tough guard for her. Deanna always does a good job of getting up a good shot in the paint. So even if he doesn't make the shot, you're going to foul him nine times out of ten. As Lewis knocks down the first of two. The Lady Bulldogs now riding on a six game winning streak. How about that? Yeah, and it's tied with the longest one we've had in A&M history, so we can break a record here in Elmore. So we'll have a, a time break here. Nice offensive rebound by Alexander to track that one down and give the Lady Bulldogs yet another possession as the shot clock wasn't particularly ready there for that. This coach wanted a Coach Funches wanted a backcourt violation. Jones finds Harris on the wing. Harris inside for Johnson Graham. As Johnson Graham will be fouled there, tripped up. Foul will go on to Watson. That'll be her first. Jones inbounds the ball, finds Alexander. Jones has now been turned into one of the primary inbounders. We talk about leadership, taking on responsibility in big key moments such as inbound plays. Now, because we've seen a couple of turnovers been accumulated through inbound plays for the Lady Bulldogs. Yeah, and that's a good move right there by Coach Richard. Nigeria is our, one of our best playmakers on the team. She's one of the best playmakers in the conference with her assist to turnover ratio. So hopefully we can see her help clean this up for us. Nice pump fake there. Shots up. No good, though from Johnson, here come the Lady Bulldogs. Trailing by four, 15 to 11 here as Alexander gets a screen from Lewis. Over into the hands of Johnson Graham, nice pass, a little bit too high for Lewis. However, she's able to track it down. Jones has the ball, 15 seconds on the shot clock, takes a mid range, it's in. And that shot was set up by a good hard screen right there by Kier. Then Nigeria gets to the spot in the mid range. Crowd is starting to get into it here at Elmore Gymnasium. Johnson driving, nice pass inside for Lidge as that one's able to drop. Seems like right now the Lady Bulldogs have got close and close and the Lady Jags have just kept responding to the momentum the Lady Bulldogs are trying to gain. Yeah, they're getting some good shots in the paint. They have 10 points out of their 17 in the paint, so we need to try and force a couple more jump shots coming out of the Lady Jaguars. Mid-range is up, too hard, no good. Ball was tipped around and out of bounds. The Lady Jags will hold on. We have a substitution here on the floor for both teams. 
as into the game for the Lady Bulldogs is Jada Clowers. And checking in for the Lady Jags is Nakia Kinsey coming back to the floor as well as number 44, Raven White. Nice ball movement here. Great defense there by Lewis, stripping the ball out of the hands of Metcalf. Harris has the ball. 20 seconds on the shot clock here as we're less than a minute in. Oh, ball went out of bounds here. Tough break there from Harris looking for Alexander. And that's our fourth turnover of the um, first quarter. We were doing a good job of forcing turnovers on Southern with the five, but we're starting to catch up with them with these turnovers. We need to clean it up. Johnson has the ball. Johnson gets the ball back. Tough mid-range shot is up. It's in. Tough break there as the Lady Jags capitalized on the turnover. Yeah, that was a tough mid-range shot by Geneva Johnson. We don't need to get her going in this game, but she's the second leading scorer for this team with 10 points per game. Jones, nice step back. Tries a three. It's in. What an answer to that big mid-range with the huge three. As that will do it for the first quarter, the Lady Bulldogs trail by three, 19 to 16. What a huge shot there by Nigeria Jones answering the call as it looked like the energy was starting to fall a little short there for the Lady Bulldogs into that last minute of the quarter. Jones answers and keeps the Lady Bulldogs within reach, now 19 to 16. Yeah, that was a nice step back three she hit right there. It's nice to see that she's starting to take over this scoring role for us, especially in the first quarter. This is, um, it became common for us to see her get these big scoring runs with her having seven points now in the first quarter and getting a good three for us. There. That's when our offense is at its best when we're hitting perimeter shots. Correct. Now, Makaya, we've seen a lot of mistakes here for the Lady Bulldogs. How can they clean up those mistakes that have been costly for them down this stretch in this first quarter? They're trying to make it hard on us as far as on the, on the offensive end. They're pressing. So we just got to continue to stay calm and just find the next man open. Definitely, as that will do it for us here in the first quarter. The Lady Bulldogs trail 19 to 16. We'll be right back after the break. It's the Alabama AM Athletics YouTube live stream. Welcome back to AM Athletics YouTube live stream here as the Lady Bulldogs trail 19 to 16. Great defense here by Harris. What a move. Shots up, no good there from Metcalf. The ball went out of bounds. The Lady Jacks will hold on to it. Guys, this Lady Bulldog team has been relatively well on the defensive end as they force a turnover there, offensive foul on the moving screen. Yeah, we have a good core defense in our team. We do a good job of even when our bids switch onto the guards, we can keep them going. It's not nobody on our team who's just gonna be an easy blow by. And I feel like we take that to our advantage on when teams try and pick on us in the pick and roll game. So Lady Bulldogs are one of the top defensive teams in the conference. Shot is up. No good there from Lewis. She'll be at the line for two. Foul will go on to Johnson. Excuse me. It will go on to White. That will be White second, team second, early on here in this second quarter. Checking in for the Lady Jags and Coach Funches is going to be number 22 to Nara Moore. 
senior forward out of Baltimore, Maryland. Or Baltimore. I think that's how they pronounce mm -hmm. it down in Baltimore. First yeah. shot is no good from Lewis. Yeah, we'll see how um, Coach, Coach Wood plays with Raven White with her getting two quick fouls as soon as she just got into the game. Second free throw is good from Lewis there. Lewis having a pretty solid outing at the free throw line this year. 72.3% from the free throw line right now as she has improved tremendously. A 10% difference between this year and last year from the free throw line as she grabs that board. She pushes, finds Jones. Jones has to get the ball across half court quickly here as she does just that. Almost got called there for a second violation. Yeah, the piggyback off he's saying, I feel like that's been one of the good improvements with Darion in our game is getting better at the, um, her free throw jump, um, free throw shooting. She's always been a good job of drawing those fouls as she's a house of the guard in the paint, but her being able to knock more of those free, down, free throws down makes it harder for teams to guard her. So we'll have an offensive foul. That foul will go on Lewis. That will be Lewis' first personal. Lady Bulldogs' first team. Johnson has the ball. Ball out of the hands of McWayne there. She's quickly able to get the ball over into the hands of Johnson. Free throw, jump shot no good there from the free throw line. Jones pushing, finds Harris back over to Jones. Nice fake there from Jones. Mid-range is up, no good. Into the hands of Lewis. Nice offensive rebound, finds Harris for three. Sailing there, no good. Tough break there. That was one of Harris's first few attempts. Yeah, she needs to continue to shoot those shots in our offense. With Nigeria being the primary ball handler, she's the <laughs> second um, best shooter we have on the floor right now, so she needs to continue to shoot those open jump shots. Elmore Gymnasium is chanting for defense here. The late Bulldogs are still within two. Moore gets the ball. Thought about him. Elbow jump shot, great defense there for Clowers, but Moore has better offense coming as she's able to get that one to fall. Johnson Graham, nice cross court pass over to Jones as they break that press breaker. That press, excuse me. 740 remaining here in the first half. Jones surveying the floor, drives towards the left wing. Five seconds on the shot clock. Takes the tough mid-range shot. High off arcing, no good. So we'll have a foul here on the floor. That foul will go on to Johnson. That will be Johnson's first personal foul. Checking in for the Bulldogs. It's going to be number zero, Darian Burgeon. Also checking in for the Lady Jacks is number three, Kayla Watson, the senior guard. Virgin tied up there. Lady Bulldogs will hold on to possession, however. Jones loses the ball there. Tough break. Johnson had a great pass, but the pass was kicked. Great defense there by Virgin to stop the transition offense. Yeah, Southern, they're playing real aggressive on the defensive end. They're forcing turnovers, and they're really making it tough for our um, Lady Bulldogs to be comfortable out there on the floor. Six early turnovers here for the Lady Bulldogs. Yeah, that was a big stat in our game last week. I mean, Friday with the 20 turnovers, even with a win. I know Coach Richards wants us to clean up our game. McWayne three is able to drop. Seven-point game here for the Lady Bulldogs as they trail 24-17. Have to get the offense going here as Harris pushing. Nice backdoor pass to Jones who feeds it off to Lewis for the left-handed finish. What a pass there on the baseline from Jones to Lewis. Yeah, that was good playing by Lady Bulldogs. Being patient, not taking no tough shots and finding the easy shot down low.
At the line for two is Nigeria Jones. Jones having a huge season, especially down this last six-game winning stretch for the Lady Bulldogs. Yeah, she's really picked up a game up. She's been a leader for his team her whole four years, but with her being a primary guard, getting everybody else into the game, she's really took her own role in the game with her scoring, and it's really showed with the six-game winning streak going Metcalf has the ball up top. The Lady Bulldogs now are within three. Metcalf finds Watson. Watson looking inside. They say the ball was tipped there. We'll have a quick discussion here from the referees as the baseline judge found that Clowers tipped the ball out of bounds there. Metcalf to inbound the ball, looking, surveying. Nice steal there from Jones. Jones pushing the ball up the right side. Look out. Great defense there from Watson to knock the ball out of Jones' hands. The Lady Bulldogs will control it, however. Yeah, and that was great defense on the inbound. Not letting nobody get any open space and making it a tough pass and got a turnover off of that. Jones surveying, looks back, finds Harris up top. Harris back to Jones. Ball nearly stolen there. As we'll have a foul on the floor. Foul will be charged to Kayla Watson. That'll be Watson's second. Team's fifth as the Lady Bulldogs now have one in one situation here. Any foul being charged will have the Lady Bulldogs at the line. Yeah, and that's a big foul. We're just having six minutes left in the second quarter. Expect our um, Lady Bulldogs to take advantage of their aggressiveness and try and get some easy buckets at the free throw line. Jones knocking down the pair. Shooting a high arcing 77% from the free throw line. Getting back to normal here as she shot a low, one, arguably one of her career lows and free throws percentage last season at 64 percent. Three is up. No good. Arcing. Lewis is able to track down the ball. What a, offense, what a rebound there from her. Jones quickly finds Harris. Harris pushing the ball up the floor. Harris driving, looking inside, nothing there over to Clowers. Clowers goes for the high-low offense. Great steal there in anticipation for more. Hunter pushes the ball up the floor. On the baseline, cross-court pass over into the hands of Kinsey. Nice ball movement here from the Lady Jags. Shot is up. Great defense there from Clowers to alter the shot. Virgin comes down with the board, pushing the ball up the floor. Cross-court pass over to Harris. She kicks up a three. It's in. Jill Harris puts the Lady Bulldogs ahead 26-24. Yeah, that's a big shot right there by Jill. Getting her on the board with her jump shooter. That's her first three of the game. Gave us her first lead of the game. McWayne, cross-court pass over into the hands of Kingsley. Great steal by Jones. Solo left-handed layup is up and in. Nigeria Jones. What a play here from the Lady Bulldogs defense turning into offense as they lead 28-24 with 4.32 remaining here in the first half. It's the Alabama A&M Athletics YouTube live stream. We'll be right back after the break.
Welcome back to Elmore Gymnasium as the Lady Bulldogs have now took the lead here 28-24. Got some much needed momentum going, coming out of this timeout. We got Elmore Gymnasium into the game. That was a big turnover by Nigeria. We have our first lead of the game and with a four point lead. Hopefully, we can stretch this out going into the second half. Great ball movement here from the Lady Jags. Cross court pass over into the hands of McWayne. Tries a three, it's in. What an answer to the Lady Bulldogs run here. And that's the last person you want open on the um, Lady Jaguar team. She's a 28% three-point shooter, but she shoots a lot of them, and she's her primary scorer from outside. Jones finds Johnson Graham, drives inside, right hand layup, no good. Scooped around, but we're going to have a foul going the other way as that foul be charged on to Dariana Lewis. Fleming has the ball on the wing. Up top over to Kinsey. Kinsey back. Nice pass inside to Moore. Moore driving baseline. Cross court pass. Nearly stolen there from Kier Johnson. Graham. Ball goes out of bounds. Fleming to inbound the ball. Serving. Finds more. More back up top. Three seconds on the shot clock. Quick shot is up. No good there from Kinsey. Out of bounds. Shot clock violation. Great defense there from the Lady Bulldogs. Yeah, we're starting to make it tough for the Lady Jaguars to get into their offense. And first half, they, I mean, first quarter, they were doing a good job of getting out on the turnovers and getting some easy buckets. But we're starting to clean up our game, and that's making them have to score in the half court. And we're doing a good job of defending them in the half court. Jones finds Harris up top. Nice move there from Harris. Gets to the wing, finds Jones up top. Driving towards the right side of the floor. Nice spin. Steps over, takes a shot. It's in. Huge shot there from Nigeria Jones as she's been coming up huge down the stretch. No surprise there. Lady Bulldogs lead now 30 to 27. Yeah, she has half of the team point right now. So points right now for the Lady Bulldogs. So she just need to keep shooting those shots. That's really keeping us in this game. Nice ball movement there. Shot is up. No good. But into the hands of McWayne. Right place, right time. She gets that put back to go. Yeah. Guys, the Lady Bulldogs have been challenging this Lady Jaguar team, looking to break away. But every time, the Lady Jags have came up with an answer. Yeah, and they're playing with intensity. They're not giving up. Even with the five fouls, they're keeping their aggression, and they're making it a tough game for us. Three ball is no good there from Jones. Nearly came up with a steal. Great defense there. As Hunter quickly got that ball out of her hands. Hunter gets the ball back, however. Nice pass. No, broken up. Great defense. Ball loose on the floor there. As the Lady Jags are able to clean it up there. Fleming has the ball. Tough drive there. Not able to come up with it from McWayne. Foul be charged to Jill Harris. We'll have a five second violation here how about that unable to get the ball in bounds every time Southern had the ball on that baseline inbound we've been doing a good job of defending you've seen it happen you've been making give some bad passing you forced a five second right there Alexander 
finds Clowers up top. This will have a five second call on Clowers. And she was crowded there, unable to find anybody. Back to back turnovers here by both teams. How about that? Yeah, it's been a good defensive game. Both teams are making it tough for the opposing team to score, and we're going to have to see who's going to make that offensive break through. Kingsley has the ball. Met with a screen from Moore. Nice ball movement here from the Lady Jags. Somehow gets forefront open for the three. No good from Fontenot. Excuse me, I said forefront there. Fontenot. It's very, very sticky of a word name there, but it's very interesting. Alexander finds Jones open for three. No good off the front iron into the hands of Clowers. How about that? Kiara Johnson Graham cleans it up and gets the left-handed layup to go. Yeah, great job by Jay to get the offensive rebound and seeing Kiara right there on the other side of the paint getting a good pass off. Fleming has the ball up top. Now with the screen, cross-court pass over to the hands of Kinsey. 10 seconds on the shot clock. The Lady Bulldogs are trying to break away here, 32-29. Fleming gets the ball quickly over to Moore. Shot is up, no good. Ball is rebounded. Shot is no good as well from McQueen on the putback, but she's able to get the steal. Alexander somehow gets the tie up. And that's the as second time. possession will remain with the Lady Jacks. And that's the second time Jada's had a little mishap like that, getting stripped. She also had the bad pass down there on the high-low action early in the quarter. So she needs to clean up. She's, uh, she's trying to take advantage of her when she has the ball, knowing that she's not the best playmaker we have on the floor right now. Well, as uh, you know, the Lady Jags have been running the small ball lineup right now. Kinsey has the ball. Tough shot. No good, but Johnson Graham is going to be called for a foul. At the line for two is Nakia Kinsey, the senior guard of Clopton, Alabama. Back in her home state. First free throw is good as she's shooting right now. 70s, nearly 78% from the free throw line. 28 to 36 right now on the season. Averaging seven points as well as she gets the second one to fall. One point ball game here for the Lady Bulldogs. Jones now with the trap, trying to drive across as she's met by Moore. Gets the ball quickly up to the forecourt. Still met with a trap there. Jones looking, finds Harris. What a pass there from Jones. Harris will bring the ball back out. Five seconds on the clock. Four seconds. Harris pass over to Johnson Graham. Tough shot is up. No good, but Johnson Graham will be at the line for two. Yeah, that was a good job of being patient. It was giving us a lot of pressure on that inbound. Good job of Nigeria. Even though she picked her dribble, find the jill and keeping the offense flowing. Foul will go. Will be charged to Fleming. That will be Fleming's first personal. Here, Johnson Graham starting her first season here for the Lady Bulldogs. Having a solid season so far for the Lady Bulldogs. Gets the second one to fall. Two-point ball game here with just 1.6 remaining. As that will do it for the first half. The Lady Bulldogs lead 33-31. Guys, a lot of back and forth action here. It's been chess, not checkers, as the Lady Bulldogs have been trying to break away and trying to pull away from the Lady Jags. The Lady Jags have answered every punch with the punch of their own. Talk about this first half. What do you guys think so far of this first half? Yeah, it's really been a defensive game for both teams. Both teams are doing a good job of forcing turnovers. With us forcing 10 and the Lady Jaguars forcing nine. So I'll be expecting both coaches to speak on them to clean up their game as Turnovers and points off the turnovers have really been a key part of this first half of the score for both offenses. Yeah, they've definitely been, um, they've definitely been aggressive on the defensive end on both teams for us and as well as for them. But we just want to continue to just try to beat, try to break that press and just get to our spot so we can be able to get a better lead than just you know, two points and then be able to get this win. 
Definitely, as that will do it for the first half. We'll be looking for second half adjustments from you guys after the break as the Lady Bulldogs lead 33-31. We'll be right back after the break. We'll be joined alongside a special guest at half, of course. Don't touch that dial yet as the Lady Bulldogs are looking to break away and come out victorious here one last time at Elmore Gymnasium for seven in a row. Welcome back to Elmore Gymnasium at half. The Lady Bulldogs lead 33-31. I'm being joined alongside now by a very special guest in no, not a familiar face, but for the first time, a Mrs. Alabama A&M University here, Nia Witten. Nia, hey. welcome on. Congratulations and welcome back to the Hills. We know Thank you guys you. were out on the road, you and Austin as well, going on the bus tour. Yeah. Te talk me through the bus tour. How was that? And what were you guys doing on that tour? Oh, man. So it was a week-long experience, really, all across Alabama. We gave away nearly $16 million, I wow. think it was. So it was really cool, and me being emotional. And that was in scholarship money, right? Yeah. Okay. And uh, seeing people get full rides and just being emotional with their families, it was really cool. It was awesome. Really? That was mm. a great experience. Yeah, definitely. So, Nia, when you first got the news of being Mrs. A&M, mm -hmm. what were your feelings, what were your emotions going towards that? As I saw you really emotional there yeah. during the um, royal ceremony. Yes. Oh, I can't even describe them. It was surreal. I, I was excited during campaigning. Everything happened really, really fast. But as you know, because of COVID, I found out like on Instagram Live. Wow. But um, I started crying immediately. <laughs> like It was definitely crazy. But I'm super excited. Sometimes I still can't believe it in really? this second semester. <laughs> yeah. Right. It's, you're now going to your senior campaign as well, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I'm about to graduate. So the next Miss a and will be coming soon. Very soon. <laughs> so Nia. How has your experience been so far as Mrs. A&M? What are the things you've been enjoying the most about being Mrs. A&M? And what did you not expect to come along with being Mrs. A&M? What did I not expect? Uh, I knew there would be a lot of attention, but I don't think anything can really <laughs> prepare you for it. Uh -huh. Like, as soon as anybody sees you, like, you're always Miss A&M. And to some people that might sound like a bad thing, but it's really cool the perks, the experiences, the people that you get to meet, uh, getting into this game. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's really cool. Uh, I've loved it. I'm working on something community service-wise for the wow. university right now that I'm going to leave here. Really? Um, a pantry for people who need, like, wow. toiletries and stuff. So, yeah, I'm really excited. It's been, it's been really great. I wouldn't have traded the experience for anything. Speaking of experience, what has your experience been like on the campus? We talked to Austin, the SGA president, of course, about his experience. And we know he has one of the most unique experiences. But we kind of share the same experience here being both communication media students yeah. as well. So talk me through your um, experience here on the campus at Alabama a and 
So I feel like I have to answer that question post COVID because things have definitely changed. But I'm having a blast on campus. Uh, as you know, our campus is beautiful. Um, on an academic aspect, it's been great. You know, I love our department. I've gotten some internship opportunities post-graduation through our wow. department. Um, I've gotten a chance to work in front of the camera, which is different since my concentration is production. And um, I've got to do a lot of new things your senior year. You know, people think your senior year is just about reviewing all you know, getting ready for the real world, but I'm still learning. You're always learning when you're here on campus. But it's been great. Definitely. Now, Nia, one last question for yeah. you here for the broadcast. Your legacy. What do you want your legacy to be as Miss A&M, and how would you want it to separate from the others? I want my legacy to be positive overall, of course. I think my biggest thing is just leaving a good taste in everyone's mouths, if that makes sense, and breaking the stereotype of who Miss A&M is and what that's supposed to look like. People have their ideas of how she's supposed to act or what she's supposed to do. But I want to give the title of freedom for that individual, Miss A&M, to make it her own. You know, if you want to have fun and you want your reign to be about fun and academics, to make it about that. Just make it what you want to have a good time, represent the university well, which I feel like I've done and I continue to do. And, yeah, just, just be memorable. And we definitely know you will continue that as well. Now. Yeah. Do you have a message for the younger ladies, maybe even the incoming freshmen come mm -hmm. getting out, you guys that came off tour? What would be yeah. your message to them going out now? My message, my number one message would be to be open-minded. A lot of people come into college with expectations, which are good to have to an Definitely. extent, but you never know what kind of opportunities and experiences that you'll go through or that you'll get. Be open-minded, and even though you come in and you may be a little confused, you may be trying to fit in, once you figure out who you are, what you like to do, stay true to that. Be yourself. Don't try to follow anyone. Make your own name because I have learned that everyone respects you more for being yourself. There's always going to be something for you. There's always going to be something here at A&M for you because there's something here for everyone. So Nia, yeah. this may have been one of my favorite interviews, of course, oh. on this broadcast. We have a lot of people on this broadcast. Thank but you. having a Miss A&M come on for the first time was huge. And we're looking forward to seeing more follow the suit as well down the line past us. I know you've had a great career here at A&M and yes. a great experience. And we just like to congratulate you again Thank on being Miss A&M and having a great campaign this year raising $16 million in scholarships for people to yeah. be passed around and seeing those faces and expressions from those families that are looking forward to coming here now on the Hill. has yeah. been an amazing experience as well as we look forward to seeing your upcoming project in the pantry as well. Thank you so, so much. Always. And congratulations to you, Charlie. Thank you. you know, it's always a blessing to have you guys Thank on you. and be able to lift our department up as well. You know, we look forward Definitely. to having more people come into our department and more mm -hmm. people in want to be production concentrations yeah. as well helping to build up and make us a prominent department in this campus as well as it should definitely as yeah. it should mm -hmm. so nia thanks again for having <laughs> us on great to have you though. great to have you definitely. thank you so much always and we look forward to seeing big things coming from you past graduation as well. all right awesome definitely. that thank was you. nia witten here <laughs> at halftime on campus of Alabama A&M University with 540 remaining on the clock. We'll be right back after the break looking for second half adjustments from Juwan and Micaiah as well as the Alabama A&M Athletics YouTube live stream.
Welcome back to Elmore Gymnasium. Chauncey Sanders here being joined alongside by Jawan Davis as well as Micaiah. Guys, we have a lot going on here. Back and forth game. Interesting. Lot still on the stake here as the Lady Bulldogs are sitting in second place. Don't want to drop and allow the Hornets, the Lady Hornets of Alabama State University to jump on yeah, and jump ahead. Yeah, this is practically another playoff game for us. With the win, we can solidify that spot in the second um, second in the swag. And I know Coach Richards wants that. It's like Coach was saying at the end of the men's game, you want to play the weaker teams in the conference. You want to stay away from the first seed. You want to play them in the championship if you do so. We need to go ahead and clean our game up as we just gave up another turnover and come out this game with a W. Lewis was looking for Harris to cut towards the baseline for an open corner three there. A little bit of a communication there on the floor. The ball went out of bounds. Nice move there from Metcalf. Metcalf still has the ball up top, guarded by Jones. Lady Bulldogs still in a 2-3 matchup zone. Gets a screen from McWayne. Nice cross-court pass over to Johnson. Mid-range is up and in. Johnson has had a sweet stroke from that mid-range. Whether it's been open, contested, or in traffic, she's knocking it down as she answers that one and capitalizes on the turnover tie ball game. Yeah, it seems like that's her sweet spot today. She's really been getting to her spots, and we need to find a way to keep her out of the mirror and make her step out and get some outside jumps. Ball knocked out of bounds. That's the Lady Bulldogs. Will hold on to the possession there. Jones searching for Clowers, finds Clowers. Nice handoff back over to Jones. Jones crosses over, takes a tough mid-range. No good off the front iron ball, loose into the hands of Lewis. Virgin out to Harris. Harris thought about a three, drives instead. No, kicks the ball out to Jones. Jones met with the screen from Lewis. Lewis gets inside, tough shot over Johnson. No, we're gonna have an offensive foul called on Lewis. Tough break there as she can't believe she was charged with the foul. Yeah, that was a good job by Kaliba Johnson. Holding her ground, staying still, and drawing the charge. And, and with that being Derry on the third, we're going to have to be a little careful with how we play her the rest of the game. That's right as one of the Lady Bulldogs' focal points in this offense is charged with her third offensive foul. Johnson over to McQueen. McQueen back over to Johnson on the wing. Ball is tipped. McQueen comes down with the carouse. It takes a dribble. Tough shot. It's up and in. Lady Jags have just been capitalizing on the Lady Bulldogs. Miscues all game long as they now lead by two, 35-33. And they have 15 points off the turnover. So whenever you can score like that, from the other team's mistakes is going to be a disadvantage for them. We're doing a good job of forcing turnovers, but we have to do a better job of not giving up them as well. Harris finds Clowers. Nice high-low over to Johnson. Graham, she gets the layup to fall. And that's the bread and butter of our offense. Nice to see that we can still get that high-low action in, even with Dariana being on the bench right now. Sears. Excuse me. Johnson driving now. Right hand layup is up and in. Nobody at home there on that one. It's Coach Richards is looking over at the Lady Bulldogs. Asking for some energy here. Jones driving. Kicks the ball off to Burgeon. Burgeon, nice fake there past Johnson. Gets a screen. Takes a tough. Drive shot is up off the glass and in. And she takes a look back at Raven White. Both teams answering here back and forth, trading buckets. Three is up. Right down the pike there from McWayne as she took that one. And responded there with a the quick three. That foul is going to 
be charged to Kinksy. Yeah, Miss McClain, she's starting to heat up for the Lady Jaguars. She now has 18 points, and it's an efficient 18 points. 7 9 from the field, going 3 for 4 from the 3. So, we need to slow her down and not let her dictate how this game is going to go. Harris finds Jones. Jones met with the double screen from Johnson Graham and Clowers up top. Finds Johnson Graham. Nice fake there from Johnson Graham. Tried to get the pass over to Clowers. That ball was broken up. Pushing the ball up the floor is McWayne. Here come the Lady Jags. Tough shot off the glass and in. Five-point ball game here as they have been answering the Lady Bulldogs' charges as well as cleaning up off the mistakes off the Lady Bulldogs. Twelve turnovers here for the Lady Bulldogs. Harris has the ball. Looking for Johnson Graham. Nice pass over to Clowers. It's in. And that's what we want Kiera. We want Kiera with the ball in her hands in that mid post area because she's a good playmaker for us and she does a good job of finding the big down low for easy lay. Great defense there by Jones cutting Fleming off. Fleming gets a screen for more. Fleming gets inside, takes a mid range. Shot is up short. No good. Rebounded by Clowers. Virgin pushing the ball up the floor. Looking for a screen. Direct in traffic here. Finds Johnson Graham up top. Nice backdoor pass to Jones. Jones, tough shot, no good. Rebounded by Clowers. She gets the putback. No, not able to get it to go. Rebounded by Moore. As we'll have a jump ball. Great. Hustled there by Johnson Graham. However, possession will still remain with the Lady Jags. Into the game for the Lady Bulldogs for the first time. It's going to be number 14, Kobe Warner. Checking game for Clowers, giving her some much needed rest. Yeah, she's going to get some more minutes in this game, especially with Dariana being in foul trouble. She's a good energy player for as well. She gets rebounds, she hustles. So nice to see how she'll make an impact on this game. Also, checking game for the Lady Jags is Aaliyah Fultonot. Nice move there. Shot is up. Bounces around and in for Fleming as she quickly got towards the middle of the key there for an open floater. Virgin driving. Finds Harris. Five-point ball game here for the Lady Bulldogs. Looking to battle back. Shots up. No good from Harris. However, she'll be at the line for two. That foul will be charged on to Fleming. So we'll have a timeout on the floor with 440 remaining in the third quarter. The Lady Bulldogs are still fighting in this one as they trail 44-39. We'll be right back after the break. It's the Alabama A&M Athletics YouTube live stream.
Welcome back to Elmore Gymnasium with 440 remaining here in the third quarter. At the line for two is Jill Harris. Now, Micaiah, lots of buckets been traded back and forth. However, the Lady Jags have been able to capitalize on the Lady Bulldogs' turnovers right now. How can the Lady Bulldogs limit their turnovers as they're with 12 turnovers as a whole right now? Just basically by not trying to force any passes or just trying to force things. Just a lot of games to come to us and just take what they're giving us. Fleming drives, kicks the ball out over to the hands of Watson. Watson hands the ball back over to Fleming. Fleming controlling the ball in the pace right now. Fotnot back over to Fleming. Eight seconds on the shot clock. Tough shot from Fleming up. No good. However, Moore is able to tip it back out. Three seconds on the shot clock. Fotnot takes a quick shot. Bounces around. No good. As the shot went off of the cable there as Coach Padaway was talking about that last game. Referees have to be accustomed and used to that wire there as Elmore Gymnasium is one of the few arenas right now that still have uh, hoops that retract off of the ceiling. Jones surveying the floor. Gets a screen from Johnson Graham. Driving in, looking, takes a tough mid-range shot. It's up, no good off the front of the rim into the hands of Watson. Moore tries mid-range, no good. A lot of air under that one. Jones has the ball. Driving against Fleming. Tough shot, it's up, no good, but Jones will be at the line for two as that foul will be charged on to Fleming. Doing a good job of being aggressive and making fast breaks opportunity. We're taking advantage of it, getting into the contact, and we'll be doing a good job of drawing fouls out as well. Free throw is up and in here for Jones. Second one is good. We'll be looking forward to seeing both teams on March 9th. That'll be this upcoming week, guys, as the Lady Bulldogs will be getting ready to prepare for the tournament here in Birmingham, Alabama. Bartow Arena had a lot of discussion, a great discussion with Dr. Charles McClellan here on this broadcast not too long ago as he talked about what he expects from all teams here in the SWAC. And he said, you know, expect the unexpected you know a lot of teams are we're expecting to see the lady uh tigers of jackson state university dominate and handle their business however anything can happen in march and we have seen that numerous amount of times here and the lady bulldogs bearing the win here will control their own destiny in a second see they won't have to see the lady tigers until the championship time yeah, and to show how competitive this uh, SWAC Women's Conference is, the la uh, Lady Bulldogs were currently at second, and with the win, we could be at second. But if we were to lose, we can possibly fall down to fourth or fifth. So it's a big game for us, and just shows how competitive this whole conference is. Flowers try to get a handoff right there close in the paint. However, great defense there from Johnson. As she drives down the floor, she's going to be fouled hard there from Burgeon. That will now be Burgeon's third personal. At the line, number 25, Kenovia Johnson, averaging 10 points a game right now. Also, to go with her 10 points is three rebounds as well, shooting at 67% from the free throw line. Gets her first one to go. Lady Jacks have had a roller coaster season so far. Took a tough three game losing streak earlier in February, losing to the Lady Hornets of Alabama State University as well as Prairie View University. Had a tough run there in Texas against Prairie View AM as well as Texas Southern. And then they responded with the two game, three game winning streak, excuse me, of their own, beating 
Grant, the Lady Tigers of Gramlin State, as well as taking care of their Florida trip against Bethune, Cookman, and FAMU. And then Thursday, they took a very tough loss, suffering 64 to 46 against the Lady Hornets of Alabama State University. Shots up, no good there from Alexander. Jones, what a steal there as she's going to be fouled. Foul be charged to Metcalf. Lost the ball there, driving and pounding the ball so hard. The ball went right over her head. <laughs> Unable to come down with the ball right into the hands of Jones. And that puts us at the free throw line. So these last two minutes with them being in the bonus, we need to take advantage of that and try to stretch his own, um, cut his lead. Jones driving the floor. Finds Alexander on the wing. Alexander. Nice move to create separation. Drives. Going to be fouled there. That foul will go on to Metcalf as well as she runs down the floor to head coach Carlos Funches. Metcalf now will be charged with her third personal foul. At the line is number one, Janiah Alexander. The young guard has had a great season so far, especially in this latter stretch of the season. Yeah, her role has grown as the seasons went on, especially when we had that short spurt and we had a lot of players on. I feel like they helped her grow as a player and she's starting to be a big role player off the bench for our Lady Bulldogs. Metcalf driving, kicks the ball. Nice ball moving here from the Lady Jags. Ball gets inside. Johnson takes a tough shot. No good. Looking for the and one opportunity. Unable to get the shot to fall. However, Clowers will be charged with the foul. Johnson will be back at the line. Knocked down her first two free throws on the first trip. Not able to get this one to go. How about that? A little bit of that free throw juju announcing those stats at the free throw line. 100%. Not anymore as she doesn't get that one to fall. It's nice to see the free throw jeans working with us for a change. How about that? Unfortunately, there's no promotion here for the late for the Bulldogs athletic program here for two missed free throws. However, the Juju did work from this broadcast. Jones has the ball, still a four-point game. Ball was knocked out of her hands into the hands of Alexander. As she gets a screen from Jones, gets the matchup she likes. She's driving, kicks the ball up for Harris for three. No good. Clowers able to get the offensive rebound and the finish. And that gives her nine rebounds on the game, and she's really been doing a good job of controlling the glass. Less than a minute left. The Lady Bulldogs are still in this one as they trail 48-46. Metcalf has the ball. Takes a tough loader over Clowers. No good. Ball is tipped into the hands of Clowers. She comes down with that one. She finds Alexander. Alexander pushing the ball up the floor. No, she's going to walk it up instead. Take her time. How about that? Like a veteran guard. Finds Jones. And this is big position for us. We can... Um, tie the game or potentially get the lead right here on this possession. Harris has the ball. Five seconds on the shot clock here for the Lady Bulldogs. Jones tries a step back. Shot is in! Nigeria Jones at the horn! What a huge shot from Jones as she ties the game at the end of the third quarter. We're deadlocked at 48. Guys, what a huge shot from Jones. Stepping back on that one to get it to go at the horn 
as the officials will look that one over to not just see about the time, but to also see where her footing was there on the floor as it may be counted for a three as she did step back. And it looked like she definitely got that foot behind that. Like you were saying earlier, that's what she does. When we need the bucket, we can get the ball to her. She's prone to hitting these big shots for us, and they gave her 17 points, and she's starting to find her groove in this game as she slowed down in the second half. Yeah, um, that was definitely a great shot, a shot that we definitely need for momentum. And knowing that Dar Dariana Lewis has been out because of fouls, it's good to see that the team is still fighting, still trying to get this win, even when we're missing one of our star players on the on on floor right now. Definitely, as that will do it for us at the Horn. The Lady Bulldogs are in for a dog fight. No pun intended there as they're dead locked at 48. It's the Alabama A&M Athletics YouTube live stream. We'll be right back after the break. Welcome back to Elmore Gymnasium. As we're seeing some of the parents of these seniors here on the sideline looking to amp their babies up here. So we're going to have a foul there on the floor. Foul will be charged to Johnson there. A little bit too much contact on the handoff as she was trying to defend that, trying to get the ball out of the hot hand. That is Nigeria Jones. Yeah, like you said, it's a big game for her. Her last game at Elmore, senior night, and she's starting to step into that role for us. As we tie the game going to this um, last quarter. It's going to be a big game to see how this finishes out for us. We'll have yet another foul here on the floor. Foul will be charged to Raven White. And that's two quick fouls on the Lady Tigers. When you take advantage of these free throws, we'll have yet another foul there on White as Lewis Tripp. Two quick, three quick fouls here for the Lady Jags. And now they're nearing the bonus, and we're not even a minute into this um, quarter. So we've been doing a good job of taking advantage of their aggressiveness. Lewis gets the ball matched up against White. Nice handoff over to Jones. Jones takes a tough mid range shot, is up, no good. Wayne controls that one as she gets the ball quickly over to Fleming. Fleming met with that 2-3 matchup zone here. The Lady Bulldogs have barely veered away from this strategy here defensively. Daring the Lady Jags to shoot the three. McWayne ties a tough shot up. No good. Rebounded by Lewis. Burgeon gets the ball. She's pushing it up the floor. Met by Fleming. Jones looking inside for the high. Low is stolen. Intercepted there by Johnson as she's pushing the ball up the floor. Great defense by Lewis. Not the foul there. Rebounded by Clowers. Jones gets the ball. Pushing up the middle of the floor. Finds Burgeon on the wing. Burgeon hesitated there. Steps in and brings the ball right back out. Looking from a screen from Jones. She gets the screen from Jones. Jones tries a three. It's in. Nigeria Jones. Jones heating up here as Virgin got the screen from Lewis and sent the pass over for Jones. She takes a big three as the Lady Bulldogs now went lead 51-48. Oh, tough play there. Jones couldn't believe it as she thought she had the easy strip on Johnson. She'll be charged for foul. That'll be Jones' first personal foul, team's first. keeping us in this game, not only on the uh, offensive side, but the defensive side as well with her three steals, and it's been a great senior night game for her. Well, it looked like she was in perfect position there on the strip. Johnson put the ball right in front of her there. Johnson's able to get the first one to go. 
went 0 for 2 on her last stint at the free throw line. Looking to put some of that free throw juju on her there. As the dog pound are doing their thing as well, bringing out a new system here with the bags during the free throw line. Not noisemakers, not using their voices, but actually using trash bags to actually stunt the vision there of Johnson. They might be having to be working for it. They have 58% uh, free throw percentage so far in this game. Harris gets a screen from Lewis. Flowers has the ball, surveying the floor, finds Jones. Five seconds on the shot clock, Jones driving. Tough shot, no, into the hands of Moore as Johnson pushes the ball up the floor. Quickly gets it over to McWayne. Nice ball movement here. Great transition defense from the Lady Bulldogs. Stop the ball and now bring the ball back out as they now lead by two. Fleming, cross-court pass. Over to Kinsey. Five seconds here for Johnson. Gets a screen. Cross-court pass over to Fleming. Nice hockey pass, but not enough time as the shot clock goes up. Lady Bulldog basketball. What a defensive possession there. And very tough play there for the Lady Jags. Not aware of the time. Yeah, and that's great rotation of defense for my Lady Bulldogs. They were trying to swing and make us move, but we did a good job of not giving them no open shots. And with them not um, being aware of the shot clock, giving up another um, shot clock violation. Harris pushing the ball up the floor, met by Fleming. Finds Jones. Nice move there from Jones. Tough shot is up, no good. She'll be at the line for two as Moore will be charged for a blocking foul. And that's a great job of uh, Nigeria taking advantage of the aggression of the Lady Jaguars. And like we've been saying all game, they're fouling a lot. That's their fourth foul. And with six minutes and 57 seconds left in the fourth quarter, we can really take advantage of the bonus. She's able to get the first one to fall. Jones, during this stretch, has had one of the greatest stretches I've ever witnessed out of her here in this lighter part of the season. Pouring in 35 points right here in Elmore Gymnasium a couple Saturdays ago on the 26th against Alabama State University. And then that was following a huge performance against Florida A&M University. 19 points as well as 25 against Bethune-Cookman, a Lady Cats. And yeah, she's always, like we've been saying, a great playmaker for us and doing a good job of getting her teammates involved. But we've been seeing lately, especially in this winning streak, that she's taking it upon herself to get our offense going with some jump shots. She has a good mid-range jumper. And with the absence of Day-Day Harp for the team, she's took advantage of being the best jump shooter that we have out on the floor most of the time. Johnson gets the ball on the wing. Ten seconds on the shot clock. Johnson driving. Stripped. Great defense from Burgeon. Finds Jones. Jones matched up against Fleming. Tough play. No good. But she's going to be at the line for two. And he's staying aggressive in the transition. Not slowing up and trying to take advantage of the Jaguars. And once again, that's the free throw line again. First one is good as Fleming checked out. Metcalf will check in for the Lady Jags. As Jones immediately let out a noise, recognizing that that one wasn't going in. Johnson serving, finds. Metcalf, Metcalf driving, takes the elbow mid-range, too hard, no good. Rebounded by two Lady Bulldogs as Burgeon able to come out with the ball there. Five-point ball game here for the Lady Bulldogs. Burgeon driving, finds Harris. Harris gets a screen from Kira Johnson Graham. Jill driving, spinning, she's going to be called for a charge as she looked like she stepped on one of the foot of the Lady Jags there. Unable to find someone in time. She was tripping and falling there. 
We'll have a quick substitution on the floor. Janiah Alexander will check in for the Lady Bulldogs, subbing in for Jill Harris. And that was our 16th turnover of the game. So just like um, Friday, we have to take advantage of the other aspects of the game and find a way to win this one. Metcalf over to Johnson, back to Metcalf. Metcalf driving, left hand layup, no good, off the glass, but unable to find the rim. Burgeon pushing, finds Alexander. Matched up against Johnson, she brings the ball back out. Nice crossover there. She takes a little bit of contact from Johnson. Kiera, nice pass over to Alexander, wide open on the block, it's in. That's that playmaker she could give you out of the post right there. Another great find by Music Brown. Yes, we'll have a timeout by Coach Carlos Funches. He wants to talk this one over with the rest of his assistants with 5.03 remaining in the ballgame. The Lady Bulldogs now lead 56-49. It's the Alabama A&M Athletics YouTube live stream. We'll be right back after the break. Welcome back to Elmore Gymnasium, 503 remaining here on a beautiful day, beautiful game here in Elmore Gymnasium, guys. A lot of action, a lot of what we wanted fed our appetites here. We know it's going to be a good one, a back and forth action game here. And now the Lady Bulldogs are pulling out all of the punches here later on in this fourth quarter as they now lead. What should we expect coming out of this timeout break from both teams? Well, our Lady Bulldogs, as we continue that we've been playing this fourth quarter, it's been a close spot game for us, but we're starting to take advantage of the Lady Jaguars. Just continue to play clean basketball. We start kind of cleaning it up our turnovers. Just have to continue to play we're playing. Well, we basically just got to continue to push the pace, have that aggression, and just make sure that we continue to start finding the next man open or just keep giving the ball to um, Nigeria because she's been hot with the hot hand. If they you know, try to get her, double team her, just find the next man that's open, continue to play team basketball. Definitely. Now, guys, we have yet another timeout break here going on now. We've seen the defense from the Lady Bulldogs step up another notch here. Do we, How much do we expect from them offensively, though? We've seen a lot from them defensively right now, and they're stepping it up big. But how much can we expect? Who do you expect for them to go down to down the stretch here on senior night? Yeah, well, I expect Nigeria to still be getting those shots that she's been shooting, like we all been saying with her having the hot hand. But it being five minutes left in the game, and even though Darion has the three fives, I know she's going to be on the floor. So I expect to get her going in this game. As Jada's um, been doing a good job of playing in her absence, but I know Darion wants to make a bigger impact on this game, especially being her senior night. But it's been a great game so far. As that will do it for us here. 4.53 remaining. We'll be right back after the break as the Lady Bulldogs lead. 56 49.
Welcome back to Elmore Gymnasium. You saw the gymnasium crowd doing the wobble here. The Lady Bulldogs have the Lady Jags wobbling right now. As they're on their back heels, they're pulling all the punches. Deep three, it's up, no good, too hard. Rebounded by Lewis. Dariana able to control it. She puts the ball up the floor. Man with the trap immediately. Got to get the ball out of her hands quick. Ball is loose. Turned over into the hands of McWayne. She takes a shot. No good. Ball bounced into the hand of Moore. Tough break there for the Lady Bulldogs. Lewis wasn't able to find any of the guards. Yeah, in that type of situation, somebody has to come get the ball from it. That's not the person who won't be driven the ball up in the trap. Rebounded there by Watson. She's going to be fouled. Foul be charged to Nigeria Jones. That'll be Nigeria's second personal. Checking game for the Lady Bulldogs is Jada Clowers as well as Jill Harris. At the line for the Lady Jags is Kayla Watson. 7.3 points a game for Watson, shooting at 53% from the free throw line. Having a tough season so far for Watson, looking to turn it up another notch though. However, now that tournament time will be around the corner after this game, it will be a whole new season. Jill driving the floor, finds Lewis, takes a mid-range shot, is up, in and out. Ball was rebounded there by McQueen. Metcalf has the ball up top. Still a five-point ball game here for the Lady Bulldogs. Driving kicks finds Watson. Watson moving the ball quickly over to Fotenot. Fotenot. Front, whoa, deep three. It's up and in. There by McWayne. Yeah, she's been having a great game for the um, Lady Jaguars. That's a 23rd point, so we need to clean it up and not let her take over these last three minutes of this game. Harris has the ball up top. Two-point ball game here. Coach Richards is going to want to talk this one over. With 3-10 remaining in the ball game, the Lady Bulldogs lead 56-54. Guys, it's a tough one. The Lady Jags. Come right back and capitalize on two mistakes from the Lady Bulldogs and now have made this into a two point ball game. Yeah, Miss McQueen has really been the key player for that. She has 23 points. She's their best shooter right now, with being the only player on the team hitting um, a three besides Miss Kinsey. So nice to see. I like to see our Lady Bulldogs pick, a, pick it back up defensively. We're doing a good job going into the fourth quarter, slowing them down. And then just coming out of the timeout, we got some quick baskets out of the Lady Jaguars. So, uh, more attention and more effort coming out of Lady Florida in the timeout. Virgin will look to inbound the ball. She finds Harris. Harris matched up along with Metcalf. Jones gets the ball. Finds Lewis. Lewis steps in for a mid-range shot. No good. Lewis having a tough one today. Yeah, with her sitting on the bench so long due to the foul trouble, that can definitely mess up your rhythm. And her being a player that usually plays big minutes for this lady build our team. Nice handoff over to Johnson. Up top, finds Metcalf. Metcalf driving, had a nice screen there for Moore. Tough shot from Metcalf, bounces around and in, and she lets the gym hear it. And that just tied the game up, so we need to get our energy going. It's two minutes left in this game, man. I know Miss Coach Rivers is going to speak with her Lady Bulldogs about trying to get into it. Nice fake from Jones. Try to step in there. She's going to be called for a traveling violation. And another turnover for the Lady Bulldogs. Metcalf gets the 
needs some direction there from Coach Punches. She gets a screen or two. Kicks the ball over to Johnson. Metcalf, nice pass over to Johnson. Steps in, takes a tough mid-range. It's up and in. Yeah, we need to cut that off from her. That's the shot she's been looking for all game with those mid-range jumpers. Harris has the ball up top. Now the Lady Bulldogs trail by two. 56-58. 58-56, excuse me. As Jones tries the mid-range, no good. Rebounded by Lewis. Put back is up and in. Stretch Lewis stretching in for that offensive rebound. Takes the dribble and gets the put back to fall. Yeah, hopefully that can get her going and as we might need her to take this game on her own for the last minute of the game. Nice bounce pass. Driving no good there from McWayne. Great defense from Flowers not to cause the foul. Less than a minute remaining here. Crunch time. Sweaty palms time. Lots of implications on this line. The game is deadlocked at 58. Harris matched up against Metcalf. Nice pass over to Burgeon up top. Five, ten seconds on the shot clock. Burgeon driving, looking, driving. Ball is loose. Tough play there. Great defense from the Lady Jags as Metcalf pushes the ball up the floor. She kicks it over to Johnson. Takes a step. Ah. We're going to be called for a blocking foul. Charged on to Jones. That's a bang, bang play right there. As Johnson went crashing in on the floor. Yeah, that's a tough call right there for the Lady Bulldogs. Johnson at the line. Three of six from the free throw line right now. First one is no good. Hey. Free throw GG when we need it right there. How about it? Where would you not want to be shooting free throws? In front of the dog town as we'll have a quick timeout here from Coach Margaret Richards. 30 seconds remaining in the ball game. The Lady Bulldogs are deadlocked at 58. Lots of implications on the lines, guys. I cannot express it enough. I can't explain any more clearer than that as whoever wins this game will be looking forward to being in one of the top seats of the SWAC tournament coming up soon. Guys, what do you expect Coach Margaret Richards to be preaching out of this timeout break? Well, I know one thing for sure that we want this to be the last shot of the game. We don't want to give the Lady Jaguars any opportunity of getting another possession off right here. So I expect Nigeria or Dariana or some type of pick and roll action to try and get into one of her big seniors. This is senior night. This is the last game of Elmore, and one of them is going to have to make a play right here. Yeah, we're going to make sure that we try to find the right play and just try to stay calm and Stay aggressive so they're able to try to get this win. Definitely. Now, guys, we know the ball most likely will be going into the hands of her playmakers, Nigeria Jones, uh, if Alexander's there. Instead, it most likely will be veteran guard Jill Harris getting the ball there up top looking to make a play. We know this most likely will be one of the last possessions. Who do you go to down here in this stretch? I feel like Nigeria needs to get a jump shot off of some sort. She's been hot all game. She's kept us going offensive. So she needs to get type of either that mid-range jumper that she likes to get or maybe get her off of um, some screens and get a jump shot. Oh, well, we're going to be looking forward to seeing that as we're going to be coming out of this break here. The Lady Bulldogs are going to have on the floor Lewis, Harris, as well as Flowers. Also in the backcourt, you're going to have Nigeria Jones as well as Darian Burgeon looking to inbound the ball right now. As they'll line up in the stretch, in, excuse me, in the stack offense. And one thing we need to make sure we do is no turnovers. We don't need to make sure this is the last shot they um, have. Everyone's on their feet here at Elmore Gymnasium as Jones gets the ball as expected up top. 20 seconds on the shot clock. Flowers 
We're in a four high offense here now as Clowers moves up to the elbow. 10 seconds nearing here on the shot clock. Jones matched up with Kinsey, mano y mano. Gets a screen from Lewis, ignores it, tries a three, no good. Clowers, ball is tipped in his hands. As that will do it at the horn, we're going into extra quarters here as the Lady Bulldogs are deadlocked at 58. Yeah, it seems like the Lady Bulldogs want to give us a little extra time in their last game here at Elmore. It's been a competitive one. Hopefully we can clean up this game and finish it off in these last five minutes. Guys, we knew the ball was going to eventually go into the hands of Jones there. Who else would have had the ball there in that situation as they got the look they wanted and they took the opportunity that they wanted get the screen and roll with one of her bigs, whether it's Lewis or Clowers, and look for the open play and make the best play that you could possibly find there. Yeah. What do you expect out of this timeout break here going into the overtime from both teams? We'll just continue to play good basketball. We started to clean our game up there at the end, and we don't want no turnovers there in overtime. Turnovers has really kept the Lady Jaguars in this game. They've been doing a good job of scoring their transitions up. We need to play clean basketball, continue to rebound, rebound the basketball like we are, and just continue to play this good defense we've been playing. And also, we just need to make sure that we get off the foul, also keep them off the foul line. We just also continue to just stay aggressive while we're going both, on both sides of the end of the floor. Definitely, as that will do it for us here in the break. The Lady Bulldogs are going to extra quarters. If they're tied at 58, we'll be right back after the break. As we're off here at Elmore Gymnasium. Five extra minutes. Everyone's on their feet here at Elmore Gymnasium as Jones gets the ball. She finds Lewis. Lewis drives. Right hand layup off the glass and in. The bank is definitely open on a Saturday. Yeah, and that's a good take right there by Dariana. We need her to be aggressive. She hasn't been beginning her rhythm. And with it being last quarter of this game, we need to take, it, take the aggressiveness off of it and get some good scoring in. Metcalf quickly gets the ball over. Deep three is answered and in by Kinsey. Boy, this Lady Jaguar team is not going away. It's been a back and forth on all game. It seems like every time we get a shot off, they get a three off. Every time we get a three off, they get a bucket. So it's been a hard fought game so far in this game. Harris finds Jones, gets a screen from Clowers. Jones over to Burge, a nice fake. Gets a screen there from Jones. Ten seconds on the shot clock. Virgin finds Jones. Nigeria driving now. Gets towards the middle of the floor. Nice pass into Lewis. Dariana Lewis getting going here, getting hot. And that's Later good. on in his second half. That's a good job in Nigeria. Being the playmaker she is, seeing um, Dariana Chandler right there in the dunker spot and finding her right there for an easy layup. And that's something that we're definitely going to need because the attention has been on Nigeria and Dariana has been able to go. But if we ever give her hot and also back to have Nigeria, that's going to take off the pressure off her as well. What a finish there from Johnson. Getting around Lewis and the finish. 63-62 here as the Lady Bulldogs trail by one. Back and forth ball game. Harris, nice move. Looking to get around. She gets a screen from Lewis. She's up top, matched up against Metcalf. Lewis gets the ball up top. Mano Imano matched up against Moore. Hands the ball off to Burgeon. Burgeon driving, looking. Drives baseline. Tough shot is blocked. Ball is tipped around into the hands of Metcalf. As Burgeon is... Hit in the nose there, looking for the foul. So we're going to have a quick break here as Johnson is on the ground. Weird play there as we saw her earlier have a, a tough fall against Jones. And that defensive possession, she just didn't look too well there when she was jumping and trying to allow herself some footing there on the landing that she's going to be subbed out immediately here. 
Checking in for the Lady Jags is number three, Kayla Watson. Metcalf gets the ball matched up against Virgin. 2.50 remaining here in this overtime period. Nice ball movement here from the Lady Jags. McWayne driving, no. Nice pass over. We're going to have an offensive foul called on Watson. Another bit pay right there by Nigeria. Drawing the charge right there in the big um, possession time right there. That was a good defensive position from my Lady Bulldogs. If it wasn't for the charge, we were nearing the shot clock violation drawing right there. Great awareness there from Nigeria as we have a slip spot here. Couple of bodies hitting the floor. Not looking for anyone else to have an injury, especially caused by a slip spot on the floor. Have to take precautions. Jones gets the ball off the inbound from Kiara Johnson Graham, who just checked into the ball game. And with her being in the game, I can expect the high level action between her and Dariana. Jones gets a screen from Lewis. Jones looking inside for Lewis. Ball was tipped into the hands of Moore. Moore anticipating that pick and roll. Yeah, it seems like Nigeria kind of forced that pass down there to Dariana. Metcalf, nice bounce pass over to Moore, wide open. She gets that right hand layup to fall. Three point ball game here for the Lady Bulldogs. Harris pushing the ball up the floor. Hey, that was too easy of a layup you just gave us right there. Need to make these shots a bit more tougher, especially being at the end of the game. Nice backdoor pass to Jones. The left handed layup is good. What a pass there. Stolen by Jones. What a pass from Dariana to get that one backdoor to Jones. And Jones able to come up with the steal. That's her fourth steal of the game. She's really been letting her defense keep us in this one. Nice crossover there from Jones. Tough shot, no good. She's going to be fouled. That foul will be charged to Metcalf. Metcalf will be charged with her fourth personal foul. And like we've been saying all game, this is what Nigeria does. She step up in these big moments. She makes big plays, not only on the offensive side, but the defensive side. Of it. She just nearly turned this game around by herself. Jones, first free throw, unable to go off the front of the rim. Still have a chance to tie this ball game here at 65. Second free throw is good. And this is a big defensive position for our Lady Bulldogs. We need to strap it and not give up anything easy right here. We'll have a timeout on the floor. And both coaches will be looking forward to talking this one over. Couldn't explain from one coach or another looking to talk it over because both coaches are looking to talk it over as we're deadlocked at 65 with 120 remaining here in overtime. The Lady Bulldogs are still looking in search of seven in a row. We'll be right back after the break. Welcome back to Elmore Gymnasium as the Lady Bulldogs are in a dog fight here. Deadlocked at 65. 
both teams trading punches down a stretch. How about that last stretch there by Nigeria Jones? Able to get the backdoor pass there from Lewis and then has the presence of mind to stay present and steal the ball and gets an opportunity at the line to tie this ball game back up at 65. Metcalf tries a mid-range. Shot is up. Bounces around. No good. Rebounded by Burgeon. Harris has the ball up top. Lined up against Kinsey. Kinsey playing that left hand of Harris. Harris kicks the ball over to Burgeon. Jones gets the handoff from Burgeon. Over to Burgeon again. Burgeon driving baseline. Nothing there. Five seconds on the shot clock. Jones gets the ball. Driving. Ball is tipped out of bounds with just two seconds remaining on the shot clock. The Lady Bulldogs are going to have to find something quick here. Yeah, we need to either get Nigeria off the screen, get a jump shot, or find a way to get Darion to turn to the basket. Harris finds Jones. Tough shot. It's up. No good. Rebounded by Clowers. The offensive rebound is up. No good, but Clowers will have an opportunity to put the Lady Bulldogs ahead. Yeah, and that's what she's been doing all game for. Her. That's her 14th rebound in the game. She's had to step up, especially with Dariana having the foul trouble. She's been doing a good job in that role. As Metcalf will be charged with that foul, that'll be her fifth. Checking back into the ball game. It's going to be number 25, Genovia Johnson. Last time we saw her, she took a ill fall there back-to-back -back times in the fourth quarter and then in overtime, and she checked out there that she was getting looked at by the athletic trainers. Clower's first free throw is no good. Tough, but she has one more opportunity to try to get the Lady Bulldogs to lead as she takes a deep breath, swipes at her Kyrie's. Spirit fingers are indeed out for the Lady Bulldogs. Second free throw is no good. Ball goes off the foot. Nearly out of bounds. Saved there from Johnson. So we'll have quickly a timeout here by Coach Carlos Funches. And that was a mirror image of what just happened for the Lady Jaguars at the end of the fourth quarter. But we're still in this game. We can play some good defense and still have another chance of another shot in this game. As we'll have a timeout break here with 31.7. The Lady Bulldogs are looking to go for seven in a row here with 31.7 seconds remaining in the ball game. We'll be right back after the break. Welcome back to Elmore Gymnasium. What a game we have here as we've seen punches being traded, blows being traded back and forth from both teams here. Now with 31.7 seconds remaining in overtime, Jones has put on a show today, 26 points, as well as McWayne, as well as Genovia Johnson, who now checked in at 19 points. Been a great one out of both one two punches for both teams here yeah we need to try and get the ball out of one of their guards hand especially with miss mcquain being the hot hand for him johnson gets the ball five seconds on the shot clock johnson drives gets the pass over to moore one second left on the shot clock however the ball was knocked out of bounds the lady bulldogs have a huge defensive break here as the officials will take a look at the shot clock they may put on maybe a second there on the shot clock. Yeah, we've been doing a good job defensively, especially when they're in the half quarter, making them run, a, run um, not get anything open, but we need to clean enough for these last two seconds and not give, any, give up anything open. Six seconds remaining. Lady Bulldogs are deadlocked at 65. Still will come right back after the break as the officials still review this one.
One second still remaining on the shot clock. Ball is quickly in. We're going to have a shot clock violation as Johnson wasn't able to get that one off in time. Yeah. We have another chance to get in the win here at the end of this overtime period. As we'll have a timeout break here. 5.2 seconds remaining. Johnson wasn't able to get that jumper off at the horn. Coach Margaret Richards wants to talk this one over full timeout and get a breakdown of exactly what she wants coming out of this break, guys. Explain to us where you think Coach Richards will force the ball to on this one as they have plenty of time still left, but not too much, 5.2 seconds, still able to get a great look at the basket. Yeah, like you said, you have time with five seconds. You don't have to kick the shoot. You can work for something. So I expect them to try and get the ball to Nigeria somewhere at the top and get um, a pick and roll with her and Darion and see if she can make a play over there for us. Yeah, I definitely see us either trying to attack the um, basket to make to at least get a shot or maybe get a foul call. Either we just push the ball out to the next man that's open, whether it's the mid range or whether it's the corner. Definitely, yes. We'll be looking forward to seeing what Coach Margaret Richards draws up after the timeout break as we're still locked in at 65 with 5.2 seconds remaining here in the ball game. We'll be right back after the break. Welcome back to Elmore Gymnasium as the Lady Bulldogs have kept their starters in with Burgeon, Clowers, as well as Lewis in the front court. Also having Harris and Jones in the back court. This can be an excellent way for us to um, close out Elmore if we can find a way to get a game winning shot right here. Finds Jones. Three seconds, two seconds. Jones driving. Takes a tough shot. It's up. No good at the horn as that will do it. We're going into double overtime. Guys, I know we may not have had that experience here on the live stream for the women's game. But for the men's game, this is giving almost deja vu here. Chess moves here. Punches being blown. Blows being thrown. Whoever blinks first will come out victorious if you are not careful. So guys, break it down here. What do we expect from both teams coming out of this second overtime period? Well, both of them need to clean it up. We have 19 turnovers and they have 18 turnovers. And this is not the time of the game where you want a turnover to be what gives up the game for you. So we need clean basketball, continue to rebound, rebound the ball well. I feel like these second chance points, especially with those two big rebounds from Miss Clowers, kept us in this game. So we need to continue to play with playing and on the defensive side, try and keep Miss McClain from those um, open shots and keep Miss Johnson away from those mid-range jumps she's been taking. Yes, we're going to have to actually be able to stay aggressive on the um, defensive end like we did stay about that and just continue to try to play our game and just find the next man that's open and continue to stay calm and don't try to get too 
to um, just stay patient. So, yeah, just need to do that. Definitely need to stay patient. As we know, mistakes will be made during this ball game. It's not a surprise there as we are human. We know that these mistakes have to be capitalized on, however. And we have witnessed all game long the Lady Jags capitalize. But I think it's been time that the Lady Bulldogs give them a taste of their own medicine and capitalize on these mistakes. Capitalize on those shot clock violations that they forced a couple times in that overtime break. As we'll look forward now to seeing the tip off here from both teams. Lewis able to get that one. The Lady Bulldogs will start off with possession. Harris hands the ball off. Great defense there from Watson as she knocked that one loose out of bounds. The Lady Bulldogs will hold on. Jones driving, hands the ball off to Burgeon. Nice handoff action here from the Lady Bulldogs. Harris able to get that one to Lewis off the glass and in. Yeah, Darion, she's really picked it up in this fourth quarter in these overtime periods with her near 20 points now scoring for us. Johnson tries a tough drive there. Way to alter the shot by Clowers. And she's able to grab the rebound. She gets it quickly over to her point guard, Nigeria Jones. Nigeria matched up against Johnson, the longer defender. She picked up her dribble. She finds Lewis. Lewis over to Burgeon. Burgeon met with a screen. Ignores the screen. Tough play off the glass. No, able to grab her own offensive rebound as she brings the ball back out. Flowers has the ball. She finds Harris. Ball nearly stolen. Harris could have drove there. She brought the ball back out. Five seconds on the shot clock. Ball is stripped and stolen by Watson. Didn't take advantage of the um, mismatch we had right there. It was a four on five and didn't get a shot off. Moore gets the ball up top to Fleming. So we just spoke on it. You got to take care of those opportunities when the Lady Jags make a mistake. Every play counts now here in double OT as the mid-range is wide open and missed. Yeah, Miss Cloud, she's really been controlling these re rebounds for the game. She leads the game with 16 rebounds, and she's been just doing a good job of making her impact def defensively and offensively in the paint. Virgin has the ball. Eight seconds on the shot clock. Virgin driving. Tough shot. No good. Off the rim. Rebounded by Moore. Fleming pushing the ball. Finds Johnson. Johnson. Quick drive. Right hand layup. No. Left hand layup. Excuse me. Was missed. Rebounded by Clowers. So we're going to have a foul here on the floor. One and one situation here for the Lady Bulldogs. As that foul will be charged on to Johnson. That will be Johnson's third. Excuse me, Johnson's fourth. Yeah, we need to take advantage of this. They've been fouling us all game. They have a couple of big players with Ms. Metcalf already fouling off. You have Genevieve with four fouls, and then, like we just said, Miss White with four fouls. So take advantage of this and take advantage of their aggressiveness. Bulldog fans here on the edge of their seats as Clowers will have an opportunity to extend the lead and make this a multiple possession game. First one is good. Flowers gets the second one to fall. Quick substitution here for both teams as Flowers will be subbed out here for Kiara Johnson-Graham. Also checking in for the Lady Jags is Aaliyah Fontenot. Crowd has definitely been engaged here at Elmore Gymnasium. As you see, they're chanting for defense from their Lady Bulldogs. Tough shot is up from Watson. No good. Rebounded by Lewis. Lewis over to Burgeon. This is the opportunity where we need to stretch this lead out and try and distance ourselves from the Lady Jaguars. 
Harris up top, matched in a four high offense. Harris surveying, finds Jones. Jones over to Burgeon. Burgeon swings it back to Jones. Inside for Lewis. Torres, a mid range shot is going to be not blocked, but called for a foul as that foul would go and be charged to Watson as she couldn't believe it. She thought it was a simple block. However, the official sees that she may have hit Lewis on the wrist. As that will now be Watson's fourth personal foul. Lewis at the line, able to extend this streak out to six. Subbing in for the Lady Bulldogs is number 30, Jada Clowers. As we mentioned before, Lewis has improved tremendously here at the free throw line. Shooting at a high clip now. 72% from the free throw line this season. How about that? Yeah, and she's been getting better and better as a free throw shooter from the beginning of her career being a 58% now to a 72%. That's a 14% difference, so she's really been working on it. <laughs> It's the second one to miss. However, the Lady Bulldogs' lead has now been extended out to five. Fodenot driving. Ball is stolen by Jones. What a defensive play there. As now Jones will be at the line for two. And that's what she's been doing, especially on the defensive side. She has five steals to match her 26 points and four assists. So a great senior night game from her. She has a good job of potentially icing this game right here. Fultonot was trying to drive there in between of that 2-3 zone. Jones was able to pickpocket her there and get away with it. As Watson has now subbed out and has fouled out of this ball game. Nigeria is able to get the first one to fall. Makes this a six-point ball game. Can't speak highly enough of the lead guard as she knocks down the pair of free throws with 134 remaining here in double OT. Yeah, she really fought for her team in this game. She's been doing what she needs to do in these big moments, and with a minute and 30 left, we just need to continue to play how we're playing. Johnson, cross court pass. Three is up in the corner, no good from Hunter. This will have another yeah. foul called out of bounds, excuse me. Almost thought that I saw the official hand go up there as Clowers will look to inbound the ball, met with a full court press. Yeah, we need to break this pace and uh, make the foulers and not give up a turnover. Harris, ball is turned over into the hands of Hunter. So we'll have a quick timeout here from Coach Bunches. Right on cue. Another turnover for the Lady Bulldog team. As the Lady Bulldogs still lead 72 67 here with 1 11 remaining in double OT. One final game here in the university's famous Elmore Gymnasium. Guys, it's been a great one. Couldn't ask for a better way to close out Elmore Gymnasium for the Lady Bulldogs like this one here in double OT as they now lead 72-67. What do we expect from them out of this press breaker? Who does the ball need to be in the hands of? We need to get the ball in Nigeria hands and we know they're gonna come with the trap so we need to come up to her to the ball and not make this pass easier for um, Miss Jones. Ball knocked out of bounds there out of Jones' hands. Flowers still to end on the ball. Matched up there in front is Johnson. Jones nearly fell there. Finds Harris. Harris finds Burgeon. Yeah, good job. Yeah. We're picking the ball up. Baby. We have the clock on our side right now. Lewis finds Harris. Harris searching. Finds Burgeon up top over to the wing. 
The senior guard, Jones, tries a three. No, too hard. Johnson pushing the ball up the floor. She kicks over. Back over to Johnson. Johnson tries a three of her own. Short. It's pretty solid weather outside, but boy, is it chilly up in here. Elmore Gymnasium as that one went skying high and falling short out of bounds. We have a break as the Lady Bulldogs lead 72-67 in double OT with just under 35 seconds with 34.9 remaining in the ball game. Welcome back to Elmore Gymnasium. As we got a warm welcome here from the Dancing Divas, a part of the Yard Runner Nike ad campaign as well. How big were they? Special to see them here. One final game here at Elmore Gymnasium as Jones has the ball. Man with the trap. Finds Kiara Johnson Graham as she holds on tight to the ball. Finds Lewis. Lady Bulldogs just trying to take time off the clock and not make a mistake. Kiara Johnson gets the ball. As she will be fouled on the drive. She'll be at the line. As that will be Johnson's fourth personal. Excuse me. That will be Johnson's fifth personal foul there. As that was miscommunicated there. Not sure if they are aware of that. That is Johnson's fifth personal foul. Somehow she's still out here on the floor. The ball is pushed up the floor here by Kinsey. Over to Johnson. Johnson quickly gets the ball across court. Three is up. Off the glass. No. Rebounded by Jones. As that will do it. Seven in a row for our Lady Bulldogs. What a way to end Elmore Gymnasium tenure here as the home for the Alabama A&M women's basketball program as they win 73-67, guys. What a hard-fought win by the Lady Bulldogs down the stretch. Took extra quarters. However, they got the job done. Yeah, and that's um, what we've been saying all year. Adversity. We have to figure out ways to win. We're near tournament season. It looks like we now solidified that second spot. And we just need wins like this. You know, a double overtime game, especially with us having a lead like that and having to break it. Um, just go down and take everything you can to win it. And that was a good game by Lady Bulldogs right there. Yeah, it definitely was. We, even though we did have 21 turnovers, we was able to get them to foul us a lot with us staying aggressive. They've been able to continue to attack and continue to push the pace with them having 26 fouls. So we was able to do a good job of that and also getting their star players in foul trouble as well. Guys, the senior guard, Nigeria Jones, came up huge today as well, stepping up to the plate, 28 points, 10 of 12 from the free throw line. Also to trickle in with that on the defensive end, five steals, and she did that in 50 minutes. One of the game's leading minute get her as she was on the floor all game long she held it down and was still able to prevail and help this team lead them on to a huge win as they'll be looking forward to going into tournament time now yeah that just shows the determination from it she wanted this game she wanted to go out on top of her senior night and not only that but the last her last game here in elmore she did a good job of that she played and nearly in that first overtime swung the game herself with the Big layup and then getting the um, steal right there and getting some layup, um, free throws. So she played an excellent game. She fought for her team, and that was a great game, great showing from her. Yeah, it definitely was. And she was able to be able to stay aggressive as well as while our um, other star player, Darian Luce, was able to, you know, she had a slow start. And we had the other teammates around that actually stepped up also. And hopefully we can be able to have a good push inside the playoffs and be able to win the championship. 
Yeah, and it was also another extra game from the other scene that we um, spoke on. It was Miss Clara. She had an eight-point, 17-rebound game with a couple big defensive stops there at the end of that game. So a good game from all our seniors, and they're definitely getting sent out well. How about that? And I'm glad you mentioned Jada Clower, 17 rebounds for this Lady Bulldog team. As Lewis had been checked out earlier on in foul trouble, Clower stepped up to the plate and held it down there for this Lady Bulldog team, grabbing in 17 rebounds. How special was she on the defensive end, altering shots and grabbing rebounds today, guy? Yeah, she was doing a good job of being that defensive anchor for us. We're used to having Dariana down there blocking shots and holding it down, but she got in early foul trouble, and Miss Carras took that upon her as this her big day, and she's going to do what she has to do. She had a good job of not only on the defensive rebounds, but on the offensive rebounds, getting a couple um, second chance and putback points for us, and those big for us in this game, especially those two big rebounds at the end of the um, fourth quarter. Definitely else. We'll now be looking forward at midcourt, awaiting a beautiful senior day here as the Lady Bulldogs come out huge 73 67 we'll be right back after the break Welcome back to Elmore Gymnasium as we're now getting our honorees here for Senior Day. Number 30, Jada Clowers. We talked about how huge she was today as she's now being honored. Clowers, accompanied by her parents, Miracle, as well as Jetty Clowers, her sister, Jakia, her brother, Jet, and friends and teammates, Janiah Alexander, as well as her significant other in Malcolm Stevenson. Also being accompanying her is going to be head coach Margaret Richards as well as athletic director Brian Hicks and also president Dr. Daniel Wings. Welcome to see him. Great sight as well. In her one season, Donning the Maroon and White Clowers has been a huge contributor for this team as we saw today with 17 rebounds as well. A force in the paint, Jada's had 10 games with at least five boards, seven outings with multiple blocks, three double-figure scoring games, and a double-double. Yeah, she's averaged a five and five off the bench for us. She's been a key player for us. She does a good job of coming in off the roll, I mean, off that bench roll for us, and also when she has to step up in the starting role as well. Coming on next, it's number 21, the stretch, the Dariana Stretch Lewis. Can't speak how well of a career she has had here for the Lady Bulldogs. She's being accompanied by her mother, Tiffany, as well as her grandmother, Gwen Lewis. Lewis also a thousand point getter here all time. As you see her now at midcourt, 
can't talk about how dominant she has had as a career here for a lady bulldog i mean it's been ridiculous since the moment she touched on the floor she made that free throw line hers and almost stamped her name on it i mean i know the elmore gymnasium has its own don but we may need to start calling the free throw line the Dariana Stretch Lewis free throw line as many times as she's been to the free throw line dominating the offensive glass as well as the defensive glass overall on the boards guys how big has Dariana Stretch been this entire career here at Alabama a and well she's been a great player since she first stepped on the court for us in a hundred games she's gave us now with the game today 41 double double and that's a nice stat to have she's um last year was a swag player of the year for us she's been a great defensive player for us all year she always leads rebounds for us and just been a great leader for this team and i'm glad to see that our seniors are getting the proper um acknowledgement as we got a w today and it was a great season another good one from dariana With the average of 13 rebounds a game last season, she not only delivered the program's Division I record in that category, but it was also the second most all-time and placed her second in the nation in rebounding. Coming now is none other than the senior guard, Nigeria Jones. Jones has had such a career here, very historic as well as John, as uh, Lewis, excuse me, as Jones now comes to half court. Jones will be accompanied by her mother, Bobby, her sister, Aaliyah, and also her, her other sister, Akila. Yeah, she's been a great leader for this team. She's one of the players that's been here all four years. She's always been a big player for us, getting big moments and big plays from her, from her freshman year on, and she's been a great leader for this Lady Bulldog team. A five-year member of this program, Jones has done everything asked of her and more, as we saw today, pouring in 28 points, 10 to 12 from the free throw line. Included among those are tying the program's win mark with 17 in 19-20 season, equaling the team's swag win mark for a season with 12, and tying the longest win streak with the current stretch of six in a row, and now has broken that with seven today. Yeah, she's seen the growth of this um, Lady Bulldog program. She was here where we were trying to find our name and see where we were going to be. We had the swag um, women's champ, um, swag women division leaders, like you said, in 2019. That was tragically stopped by COVID, but found a way to almost get it this year with the second place and still with a chance to be the swag tournament champion. So, nice career that we've had from Miss Nigeria Jones. Also, also, excuse me, this season, she's been one of the most dangerous and versatile players in this conference and in this league of division one women's basketball i mean she's been acknowledged by box to row national player of the week honor as well as whack player of the week recently as she poured in 35 points right here in elmore gymnasium against the lady hornets of alabama state university that has to be one of her biggest games of her career right here at Elmore Gymnasium as well. And then we just saw today, double overtime. The second place of the SWAC is on the line. Positioning is on the line for the conference. She comes out and puts on a show. 28 points. 10 of 12 from the free throw line. Making huge stops. Getting huge steals. She had five steals today. Can't talk about her enough as she has so many accolades here so many great performances here for the lady bulldogs yeah and she's been an excellent and one of the clutchest player i've seen in my time here at um, alabama a m she never backs down from the big shot she hit that big game winner against alabama state not too long ago and she never backs down from the big moment and definitely a key point in the um, victorious and w's we've been getting in this lady bulldog program so we'll be right back after the break here as we will now have the men's seniors come out here as we have 
number 12, Brandon Powell, B. Powell. Welcome back to Elmore Gymnasium as we now see Brandon Powell being honored here at half court. Son of volleyball head coach Powell. Can't talk about his energy enough, Jawan, about how great he's been sticking it through during his career here at Alabama A&M and it's been paying off dividends, especially recently as we've seen him come up huge in big games this season, especially over there in multiple overtime win against the Rattlers of Florida A&M University. Yeah, and the words of Coach Pettway, he's a, co a player that um, every coach will want. He's a great energy player. He always makes the right play. He does a good job of playing on ball defense. He forces turnovers, and he's a great rebounder for him not being the big man for us. And like you said, he um, did a lot of good things for this program. He's shown that even though, you know, you might not get those big uh, minutes that you might have wanted when you first came here, just sticking through it. He stayed all four years, and he did what he was supposed to do. Definitely did what he was supposed to do, handling the business on the cl in the classroom as well as on the court. And he has shown it this year. It's been paying him back this year coming up huge in different plays and aspects. Coming next is Miles Parker. Miles has had a solid season as well. I've seen him play in some very big minutes, such as the Florida A&M game as well, helping this Bulldog team get to six in a row. Yeah, he's the Auburn transfer, and he's really grown into his world, especially in his second season here. He didn't play as much with well, only five games in his first season, but he's found his role in this team, working his way up to the starting role. He's a great scorer for us. He has a nice touch in that mid-range game, and he's a great defender as well. He has some nice bounces. He's made some great athletic plays for us also this year. Parker is being accompanied by his parents, Marlo and Jennifer Parker, and his sister, Markayla Parker. You know, Parker returned here from Huntsville after playing for, like you said, Juwan, the Southern Conference Power Auburn University under Coach Bruce Pearl. And during his two seasons, he's been such an integral part here, bringing some of that leadership he learned from Coach Pearl and the Tigers over there at Auburn University and coming over here and helping the Bulldogs out, bringing the energy that he found with the Tigers as well, and it's turning into wins, not just on the floor, but off the floor as well. You know, you see the energy. These guys are more connected than ever before. When you check them out, they're always together, always around on campus here as we're going to get a celebration here at half court for both Brandon and Miles. Yeah, and when you have leaders like this, unsel unselfish players on the court, great students off the court, when you have players like that leading your team, you can expect good to come from it. And they're um, good players for us, good students for us. And I know Coach would definitely be one of them to go out victorious as we're going to see how we all perform in this last, their last game here in Elmore.
Welcome back to Elmore Gymnasium as the Lady Bulldogs came up big, 73-67. After that emotional, very touching senior day activity there, honoring our seniors here after the game. Being joined alongside here by Coach Margaret Richards. Coach, that was a special one. What a better way to go out of Elmore Gymnasium with the big win like that and double overtime at that. More quarters than we expected, more quarters than we like. But as usual, coming out with the W, can't be mad at that. Coach, what was your experience out there and how pleased were you with the win here in double overtime? Uh, I told them when we went into the second overtime, I said, ladies, the toughest team is going to win. So the bumps, them, you know, the hand checks, those, you know, whoever is going to buckle down, play defense, and get those stops and end it with a rebound, that's going to be the team to win. Definitely. Now, Coach, we mentioned earlier about your senior guards, and we know it's senior day, but goodness gracious, Nigeria Jones, you called on her time and time again today, and she came up huge, whether it's with a huge steal later on in the game to ice in the game with free throws and putting you guys ahead by multiple possessions. Yes. How big did she come through, and how happy are you with her during her career here as a Bulldog? I, I'm extremely excited. I was extremely excited for her today. And, and most importantly, you know, she has the experience, and I want her to go out on top. And I told her, I said, hey, Definitely. this is your last time playing at Elmore. Make it special. Last year it was just terrible with, you know, a oh, lack of depth. Yeah. But this year we have the depth. We have the size. We have everything we need. And I promise them, just believe in the system, believe in the program, and it will be better. And just all I ask is you give your all. And that young lady give her all at all times. Even when she came down and made a mistake, but she got it right back on defense. And I'm just proud of her. And she continue yes. to make plays. As well as your other seniors as well with Clowards and yes. Stretch Lewis coming yes. up big, especially in the second half from Lewis. You know, she got in foul trouble there. and She had a little bit of a difficulty. But then she got it going there in that fourth quarter in the later part, as well as Clowards pulling in 17 rebounds. They came together and had a huge game as their last game here at Elmore Gymnasium. Yes, that was extremely exciting. Again, those two twin towers, you know, they play so well together. You know, they look for each other on a high-low. But most importantly, you know, we knew we had to try to figure out a way to slow Southern down. They're so tough and gritty. And they do a good job with the drive and kick. So we want to keep Jada around the rim, you know, so she can get those vertical rebounds. And we got stretch on the opposite side so she can get anything to come along. Definitely. We've been seeing that high-low game being worked in definitely this season for sure. Juan? Now with um, us now having seven wins going into this right tournament and we've been having a lot of adversity with uh, different way of wins, whether it's <laughs> overtime and big games like that, how can you speak on these wins and these close ones coming into this right tournament, how this can help fuel y'all in this um, tournament? I feel like this team is bought in and they are All focused. Way. And when I tell them something, they try to do it and execute it. That is very, extremely important, especially being in March. I need this team. We are focused on winning, and we find a way to win. And I tell them, I say, hey, the, the team that played the best defense will win because, as we see, we went on a drought where we couldn't score. But, again, we found a way to get stops and get to the basket and get to the free throw line. Yeah, like you said, defense and rebounding being two of your main things that you like from your team. How can you speak on how that's been a key part of y'all in this run? Y'all are getting 10 steals a game, every game it seems like now. It's been huge, and it, them are always my goals. And they laugh at me every time. I was like, hey. You know, we need to be plus five on the boards, and we need to keep our opponent on the 55. Because, again, we're not an offensive juggernaut team, but we're tough. We can rebound the ball, and we can defend. So that's going to be our focal point going into next week, into the tournament. And I need everybody to continue to be bought in and stay focused on the prize and play with a purpose. Definitely, Coach. Congratulations on Thanks. the huge win. As usual, you guys are now at seven in a row. I mean, how big is that in your coaching career right now, especially here in your tenure at Alabama A&M University? I'm just excited to be able to do this uh, in front of these wonderful fans and this great administration that gave me opportunity six years ago. You know, when we came in, we were just, it, it, you know, a lot of things was wrong, but we found a way and they believed in me and we found a way to, you know, get some players in here that can play Definitely. and compete at this level. And we just want to show the fans something to be proud of. And we appreciate that support and the patience. So we just want to continue to, you know, try to do what we need to do, stay focused and play with a purpose and do something special and win this championship. Definitely, Coach. And we're looking forward to seeing you guys continue this streak on and this high streak and go on now into tournament time and do just that, win the championship, Coach. Good luck. Yes, Thank good you. Good luck to you guys. We'll definitely be there in Birmingham yes. checking you guys out. 
So good luck. I look forward to seeing you guys do your thing as usual and handle business. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Go Bulldogs. That was head coach Margaret Richards. We're looking forward to hearing from the seniors, Jawan, as they will join us alongside here. What did you take from that interview there with coach Margaret Richards? It just uh, shows how good our team has been. We've been playing through adversity, just did different ways to win, and just showing that she has belief in her girls and belief in her team. We're one of the hottest teams in the um, SWAC Women's Tournament behind them, so we need to just take, take this energy going on into the um, postseason and see if we can win the tournament. Definitely. Yes. We'll be looking forward now to hearing from our seniors. They'll be right back after this break. Welcome back to Elmore Gymnasium as we're now starting to have a little conversation here before the game here as the Lady Bulldogs prevailed 73-67. I'm being joined alongside now by Dariana Lewis, Stretch Lewis. Now, Stretch, you had a great career here at a and You transferred in here coming from Omaha, Nebraska. I know that had to be a huge culture shock coming down here to the heat down here in yeah. normal Alabama. Now take me through it. How happy are you with your career? What's your thoughts on your career here? And what did you want left here at a and um, I feel like I'm very happy with my career. I know that I came in and I had to work for everything that I got. Like newcomer of the year, it wasn't easy to get, but I had to work every day, get in the gym on my own. Um, it was very fun though. It was never hard. It was never like I was ready to give up or anything like that. Like I just kept going, kept pushing. You know, motivated myself, got motivated by my teammates. Um, and yeah, that's really it. It was really fun though. Now you had a great career here at Elmore. Um, what was your, some of your favorite things, what you're going to miss about playing here, especially with the dog kind and them getting into these games? How, what are you going to miss now that this being your last game here at Elmore? I'm definitely going to miss the environment. Everybody here knows me, so it's a very fun environment to play in. They're yelling, screaming my name, things like that. Um, definitely going to miss Coach Richards. She's a very good coach. Um, she gets on us a lot, but I know that she's just speaking from the heart and she really cares about us, so I'm going to miss the coaching staff and also going to miss the environment. Definitely. Now, Stretch, what were some of your favorite games here at El Martinez? You have plenty of huge plays here. I mean, don't even get me started with this season alone, but what were some of your favorite plays, some of your favorite games here at El Martinez? Um, my all-time favorite game was the Alabama State game. I've never seen – well, I've never played Alabama Fire. State in this gym. Right. So it was a really live environment. Every seat was filled. Everybody's on their feet cheering, laughing, joking. So I really love that game. Um, the, also, the other game would be our first playoff game that we played here um, before COVID canceled right. our season. That was 19, a, 20, 20 season. Yep, right. that was a really good game, too. Definitely. Right. And this one. Oh, of course. Can't forget about this one. Double overtime. Lots to take away from that one. Yeah. Like the teammate Clowers coming in big. There's 17 Definitely. rebounds. How Can you speak on it about your other seniors, how big they've been as you guys have came in this one together, and you guys have been showing up huge together as well? Um, we, we just have good chemistry. I mean, like, Jada knows when they're doubling me or when I can't get something going, she knows that she has to step in and get something going, or vice versa. If she can't get anything going, I have to step up and be there for her. Nigeria as well. If Nigeria can't get anything going, we both got to be there for her, so we always have each other's back. She always has our back. Our Alabama State game, we couldn't really get going. She had a hot night. She helped us a lot. Incredible night. Yeah, so I just think that us having each other's back definitely helped us every day, even in practice. Like when somebody's not having a good practice, they're always encouraging. Like, you got to stretch. Come on, stretch. Come on, stretch. Like today, they're like, come on, stretch. We need you. You got it. You got it. So, yeah, just support. Definitely stretch. Thanks for joining us here on the live stream. And good luck down in the tournament. One last question for you. What do you expect out of the tournament coming in now that you guys sitting in second? 
place second seed now going into tournament time. Swag championship, none less. Like, the job's not done. This is a great accomplishment for us getting second place, but the job's not done. So I feel like we can win a swag championship. Everybody else feels the same way. Definitely. Stretch, congratulations. Good luck. Job is not done, like you said. Look forward to hearing big things from you guys when tournament time comes in Birmingham. Coming Thank you. Up soon, always. That was Dariana Lewis here on the live stream speaking with us. Lots to take away from that as well, Juwan. She had a great time here at Alabama A&M. Omaha, Nebraska to normal Alabama is no friendly trip. Not a similar area as well in geography-wise as we talk about the, the weather. I mean, from the culture. You know, it's, it was got to be a huge culture shock from her. Yeah, it's a big difference. I mean, it's humid, it's hot down here, especially coming from a cold place like Nebraska. So I know it was a culture shock, like you said, for especially being down here at the HBCU. Now joining us is senior Jada Clowers. Jada, What's big up? game for you today. What's up? What's happening? 17 rebounds today. Yeah. Did you really take out there and just feel like you had to take this one personal as it was your senior? Yeah, definitely. Senior day? Mm -hmm. You only get one senior night. Definitely understood. Now, now Jada, you guys had a huge game today. How important was it to get this win against the Jaguars, the Lady Jags of Southern uh, University? It, to me, it was really important just because we already lost to them before, and I felt like we shouldn't have lost to them. So this, us winning this one was big, and then I did it. On top of that, we did it for Coach. So yeah, with, I know she wanted a lot. Yeah, with Darion to get the foul trouble early in this game, and you having to step up in a um, big role with her being gone, how can you speak on how Coach was speaking with you and what she was telling you keeping you going in the game? Mm, mainly just... I don't know, because a lot of times I get frustrated. So it was I just know I had to step up because Stretch is like the leading. You know, she has a good score, good rebounder. So I just know that's a role that I had to pick up. And at that point, that's something that we need. Rebounding is like – and they are a good rebounding team. So I know that's something we need to win a game. Definitely now. You guys are going now towards tournament time, second seed. Stretch already just told us here, job is not done. Championship or bust. High expectations for you guys. How do you feel about that? I feel like us as a team, we just got to come together as a team, go hard every day, and continue this winning streak. I, I don't plan on losing. I plan on going all the way. So. Now, Jada, you did just transfer in here, correct me? Yes. So how has your experience been here on the hill as a Bulldog versus at your previous stint? It's been, for me, it's been way better. Uh, I love the weather. I like where to be real <laughs> That's hot. what I said. I, I <laughs> said that as well. Cold. Um, Reason. The transition here, though, in the beginning was a bit difficult for me just because I had to learn a new program. They had to build me into the player that they wanted me to be. So, But I, I feel like I adjusted well. You know, I'm still learning some stuff, but I in feel the, like I adjusted. In the HBCU culture, how big has that been, having that influence now here at AM and versus at your previous day? Um... It's been really big because before, like, I was like, I wanted to come to an HBCU. I just didn't know which one. And then just came here. I enjoy it, though. I really do. It's awesome. Tom. All the events on, on campus and stuff. So. Yeah, and with you having this one season at Elmore, especially with us coming back um, with all the fans, what would you miss about um, most about playing here at Elmore? Just, I guess, just being coached in the gym, mainly, you know. Yeah. And then coming to the games and having everybody here. And Definitely. having a big fan base because I know um, at my last school we wasn't you know it was COVID so we right. wasn't able to like have fans and stuff like it's empty. So. Definitely understand that, Jada. We appreciate you for joining us Thank on you. the live stream. Thank you. Huge game today. Congratulations. Looking forward to seeing the same energy out there on the floor when you guys take whoever you take on, whether the the seeds fall there in Swag Tournament time. Thank you. Good luck in Birmingham. Thank that was Jada Clowers joining us here. Juwan, lots to take away from her as well. So much from our seniors, a lot of emotions. And also having those transfers, because, you know, Stretch and Jada were not homegrown. They were transferred in here, and it had to have been a culture shock coming from an HBCU, as well as coming from a different state down here, adjusting to that weather, adjusting to the lifestyle of being down here in the South. Yeah, it's a lot of adjustments you have made. Like you said, both of them coming from the schools they were at to HBCU. I know that was a different form, a culture shock form, just being in this environment. And then with us having the season out here in Elmore, both of them being there to experience, it's nice to see that they both acknowledged and had a good time here in Elmore. 
Now joining us is none other than one of our homegrown Nigeria Jones. Nigeria, this season alone, I mean, we could talk about the growth later on, but this season alone, how big have you took it personally coming in this season? We've seen you put in huge scoring outpourings, including the 35-point game against uh, Alabama State here at Elmore Gymnasium, as well as 28 points today. How personal have you took it this season on your senior campaign? Um, I took it very personal just because I've been here since my freshman year, and I just really feel like that I can lead this team in this university to get us another ring. Yeah, with you being here since your freshman year, you've witnessed a lot here in Elmore. How can you speak on the experience here in Elmore, especially with this being the last game period here in Elmore? How can you speak on your experience here? My experience? Yes, yes. Are you saying like basketball-wise mm -hmm. or Oh, yeah, life? basketball. We're well, both. Oh, well, the experience I got here was amazing. I learned a lot, especially, you know, being a starter since my freshman year, I definitely was able to learn a lot. And I had to, you know, put my big girl panties on <laughs> when I was 18 years old. So I got great experience being here. Now, Nigeria, I want to talk about the growth you had since your freshman year to now. You know, earlier on in your career, you weren't truly recognized as the shooter you are today. Now, when you look back at your freshman year to now, how huge of dividends has it paid seeing the growth from then to now? You said how big? Well, I didn't how hear. big? I'm sorry. How huge has your career? You weren't really recognized as a shooter mm -hmm. earlier on in your career, but now you have turned into a sharpshooter, a, a dual threat guard where you have to play up on you now. Right. How huge has development been here for you at A&M? My development has been huge. You know, I had to put hours and hours, blood, sweat, and tears into, you know, developing myself into this player that I am today. Now, Nigeria, there's plenty of other young guards coming in. How have you took them in? Now, when you were a freshman, you guys were the freshman crew, you know, yourself. Now, the Collins, we spoke on this before. Right. Now, you are the OG of the group. How have you took those young guards in and helped them get accustomed to this system with Coach Richards and the Lady Bulldogs? You know, just being a positive leader, you know, I don't got to always be rah-rah on them. I know some it can be frustrating, you know, as a freshman because I've been there. So I right. try to uplift them as much as I can, but also let them know what time it is. Definitely. Now, Nigeria, you guys are going towards tournament time. Mm -hmm. You know how big it can be. You guys had an opportunity to capitalize on it in 2019, 2020, when it looked like you guys really had a lot of momentum like now. Right. Very similar. Right. And it was cut short due to COVID. How, what's the height of this to you guys? How high is it for you guys to try to handle business and knowing the stakes that are aligned for you and the rest of the seniors? Um, the stakes are extremely high and I really do think that we're going to follow every game plan and that we're going to end up on the top. I really do. We have a lot of momentum going into this tournament, and I don't see it stopping no time soon. Now, Nigeria, one last question here. What do you want your legacy to be as you get ready to prepare to leave Alabama A&M University? You know, I just want to be known as that that leader, you know, the PG. And people around campus <laughs> call me the PG, you know, since my freshman year. And just being, you know, a respectful woman. And, you know, being clutch. You know, Definitely. I'm on for being clutch. <laughs> yeah, I saw you made the huge steal down there earlier in the mm -hmm. game. And then you iced the game here at the free throw line right. in double OT. So, Nigeria, thanks again for joining us on the program. Thank you, Chauncey. Wish we could have had Thank you on you. this season as well. A lot more. But you came up big today. You've been coming up big all season long. Mm -hmm. And we want you to keep continuing that and bringing that not just on the court but off the court as well with the clutch, okay? Of course. Definitely. Thank you, guys. Thanks for joining yeah, us. Fun. Nigeria Jones here during this one. The guys had a – the Lady Bulldogs had a huge win, 73-67. Jawan, lots to take away from our seniors as they're going now to tournament time, finishing up one last game here at Elmore Gymnasium. Last thoughts on what the seniors had to say and overall on this season as this was the final regular season here for the Lady Bulldogs. Yeah, nice to see this positive mentality that we got all of them. They're happy about the win. We have a record winning streak. They went out there seeing night on top. They closed Elmer out well, but it's championship of us. They said that they want that ship. Uh, especially with um, Darion and Nigeria getting the taste of that in 2019 and getting cut short, like you said. They want that ship. Now, nice to see that they're betting on themselves and they want to go get that ring. Now, it won't be easy 
as we've seen a lot of tough games here at Elmore Gymnasium just recently now double OT with the Lady Jags and they may come across the Lady Jags again they may come across the Lady uh, Panthers of Prairie View A&M or the Lady Cats of Bethune Cookman University and they're gonna have to rise up to the challenge and we know we know for a fact that they may end up having to see the regular season champs in the Lady Tigers of Jackson State University right here in the tournament in Birmingham. Yeah, and I'm real confident about our Lady Bulldogs. I see we got to witness a good game in that um, matchup here at home. The Lady um, Tigers, they have a good streak on them as well. They have their 17 in a row, so hopefully we can both see who we match up with, but I got confidence that our Lady Bulldogs will be able to pull through in this tournament. Definitely. Now, Juwan, final thoughts here on this season, you know, senior campaign. Lots of great games watched here. Lots of great games called here between the both of us here at Elmore Gymnasium. What's your thoughts and what are you going to take away and what do you want your legacy to be left here on this broadcast and on this campus here of Alabama a and University? Well, I just want to know that we pushed towards something. It was started with Reggie when we got here. He helped lead the way with us and he showed us right. And now we have to pass the torch. We did a good job, I feel, calling these games. We've seen a lot of big moments. We've seen some um, bad losses, but we've seen some great wins. We've seen some buzzer beers, so we've seen a lot. So. I want to be able to pass this on to um, the rest of the AM and that we can get this bigger and bigger, and we never know where this can take us to. Definitely, Jawan. Thanks again for joining me along, man, being around this great ride here. One final stint here against the Lady, for the Lady Bulldogs, against the Lady Jags of Jackson State, uh, excuse me, Southern University here as the ladies win 73-67. Juwan, good luck on your endeavors. I'm so glad we could be a part of this together and watch the uprising and the renaissance of this athletic program here on the hill at Alabama A&M University as well. As that will do it for Micaiah and Juwan, I'm Chauncey Sanders. We'll see you all during tournament time and next season as well as the Lady Bulldogs have a lot more business to take care of on the road in Birmingham. Thank you all and stay tuned as the men will get ready to tip off soon enough after this break. <laughs>